and by First Bank. There are a lot of compelling reasons for buying a Dodge Ram. A potent line of Magnum engine, the most available towing of any pickup, payload capacity of up to two and a half tons. But perhaps the weightiest argument is this. Dodge Ram has higher resale than Ford, Chevy, or GMC. The rules have indeed changed. Hey, Flyboy! Come be in there? Unless you check the hard side suitcase, we have a major crisis downstairs. You thought coach was bad. It's a war zone down here. That's why I checked the Samsonite hard side. Hey, isn't that your bag? You check a hard side, your clothes won't come out looking like origami. Sir, could you please return to your seat? Serve tonight, hard side. Life is hard. Don't go soft. What's this thing do? There are some things in life you just can't do alone. Like driving on the North I-25 Downtown Express. So grab a partner. Carpool can now join RTD buses and save 13 minutes on the Downtown Express. Call Light Arrangers for more information. Busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted with Clint Eastwood all week on UPN 20's Prime Movie. Go ahead. Make my day. Wednesday night at 7, a killer is busted. Eastwood must capture a homicidal maniac in sudden impact. Thursday night at 7, Harry's disgusted when a serial killer torments the city by the bay in Dirty Harry. And Friday night at 7, Eastwood can't be trusted by the Russians in Firefox. Busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted. Starting Wednesday night at 7. We're in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Lewis Field getting ready for the kickoff between CU and Oklahoma State. The local weather forecasters say we caught a break today. They were expecting cold and sleet. Good Looks like it won't get here until at least tonight. Right now, the temperature, a very nice 55 degrees, humidity about 25%, and virtually no wind here in the stadium. Right now, let's go down to the field, and our Mark McIntosh will be giving us reports throughout the ball game. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. You mentioned before the break that the Buffs are 8-0 after Nebraska since 1988. But when they've had to come to Stillwater, it's always been a tough test. Two years ago, they didn't salt the ball game away until the fourth quarter. And you might remember back in 1991, one of the crazier ball games in CU history. CU needed a fake field goal for a touchdown to Christian Fourier in the final seconds to beat Oklahoma State. So this has always been a difficult stop after the Nebraska game, coming to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and playing the Cowboys. And the Bucks must come out and play well, make things happen early to try to take Oklahoma State out of the ball game because the longer they hang in there, it seems the tougher the Cowboys get. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. I remember that 1991 game very, very well. In the last few seconds, CU fakes the field goal. The holder, Robbie James, throws to a freshman tight end playing on the field goal unit, Christian Fourier, for the winning touchdown. Fourier, of course, went on to an All-American career at CU, and now a rookie with the Seattle Seahawks. Well, Oklahoma State won the toss and will receive the football. Kicking off for CU will be Jason Leslie, he of the strong barefoot leg. And back to receive it for Oklahoma State, R.W. McQuarters, Kevin Williams, and Jeroy Johnson. Three men lined up back at the goal line for Oklahoma State. Well, both teams coming off losses last week. CU, of course, the loser to the top-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers, 44-21. And Oklahoma State lost at Iowa State by the score of 38-14. And here we go. Leslie with an uncharacteristically short kick to the 15-yard line. And Oklahoma State gets the ball up to the 27. On the return was number four, Jeroy Johnson. Well, let's line up that Oklahoma State offense for you. The man leading the charge for the Cowboys will be number nine, Tony Jones, a junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Jones, frankly, not one of the better quarterbacks in the game, throwing just 44%, completing just 44%. He is a threat to run with the ball with 100 yards on the year so far. 
From their own 27-yard line, Oklahoma State, the first play from scrimmage. Jones going deep. The intended receiver was R.W. McWhorters, a very talented freshman who will also start at quarterback for Oklahoma State. All right, here's the whole Cowboy offense now. The running back is David Thompson, closing in on 1,000 yards for the year. The fullback is Akins, the tight end Mays, and the wide receiver is Kent Luck and Terrence Richardson. And the offensive line goes Lenin, Waterbury, Hope, the three-year starter at center, Henson, and Menifee. On second and ten, we're just underway. Oklahoma State with the ball. This time it's David Thompson on the ground. He has room. He has the sideline. He's across midfield and finally knocked out by Rosga at the CU 40-yard line. David Thompson is pretty much Oklahoma State's offense. They don't throw the ball very much. You'll see that they're going to get their running game started here. CU wants to make Oklahoma State run the ball. Makes a good cut to the left side of the, the uh, field there. Gets up the sidelines. You see the speed of Thompson right there. Uh, Coach Neuheisel compares David Thompson to June Henley of, of uh, Kansas. So he's a great running back. He's a guy that they must stop today. David Thompson out of Okmulgee, Oklahoma. 5'8", 200-pound junior. He averages almost six yards a carry on the year. First down for Oklahoma State at midfield. This is Thompson again. He'll try the left side again, but this time, not a successful. Again over the left side. Again of a couple yards, making the tackle, T.J. Cunningham. And now we'll look at the CU defense. The front four, Jones, Olsen, Hicks, and Price, who had a very nice game against the rest. The linebackers are Mike Phillips, the All-American candidate, Matt Russell, and starting at the other outside linebacker is the junior Alan Wilbon for the injured Ron Murkerson. The defensive backs you see right there. And on second and eight, Oklahoma State gives to Thompson again. Thompson the right is the guy that they've got to stop. You're going to hear his name a lot today. He's their workhorse. Oklahoma State is last in the Big 8 in passing, so that tells you right there how much they actually run the football. They're going to try to run it inside, make you stop their run. And that's what they've got to do to try to win. Thompson ran that ball down to the CU 41 yard line. That'll bring up third and two. Third down. Only one wide receiver in this set for Oklahoma State. This is Richardson. Andre Richardson very close to the first down. Matt Russell made the stop. Let's see if he stopped it a little short. Andre Richardson is another guy that Oklahoma State will rely on. Their running game is very, very powerful. They can do a lot out of their running game. He averages about 6.9 yards a carry. So that tells you there that he's powerful. He, he gets his shoulder square up the field, and he does not go north-south in this stadium very much. He, he, much he goes east-west. This stadium shaped a little differently than most. Most stadiums go north-south as to uh, avoid the sun. Oklahoma State does pick up the first down. This stadium, however, runs east-west. What does that do to you on the field, Jeff? Doesn't really do anything to you, I don't think. It's, it's a, kind of a crazy thing to think about, but a football field is a football field that's 100 yards long, and, and uh, it's usually green, and they do a good job with it. Well, what about as far as the sun? Uh, sun, it'll hurt you a little bit on your special teams. Your part returners may have a problem with it, but uh, right now it's cloudy enough, I think, where uh, it should be okay. First down for Oklahoma State at the CU 39. This is Richardson again. Hit once, but stays on his feet and gets down to the 30. That's a pickup of nine. Matt Russell finally brings him down. That's a great run by Richardson. You know, he's the type of back that's going to get the yard for you. He's going to gain a lot. He has 6.9 a carry, like I said earlier. You're going to see him take off to the left side. And great cutback. Great runners or cutback runners. He gets his shoulder square. And you see the leg drive that he has. All great backs that are in the NFL and college have that type of leg drive. That's not the only Richardson on this team. His brother, Terrence Richardson, a freshman, is a starting wide receiver. Right now, Oklahoma State with second and two. Jones throws complete. And another first down. The pass catcher was Willie Grissom. Kenny Wilkins, the tackle. First down and 10. 
This is the type of play that Oklahoma State can use all day long. They can throw the little three-step drop by the quarterback, a little six-yard stop route by the receiver on the outside, and try to let him do the rest of the work. You know, but try to, they need to try to not throw the ball very deep because that, that gives you the opportunity to turn the ball over. And they're actually putting together a pretty nice drive here right now. Willie Grissom, one of many freshmen, part of the wide receiver core here at Oklahoma State. As a matter of fact, there's only one receiver who's not a freshman, and that's Kent Luck, a junior. So a very young receiving core. On first down at the CU 21-yard line. The pitch. This is Thompson. Finally caught from behind by Nick Ziegler. But not before Thompson picks up six yards. Greg Jones came up the field, did a good job containing him inside. You see the footwork of the running backs. All good running backs have good footwork. You see Richard come out here a little quick step. Actually, Will Bond, or Williams was the guy that, that uh, forced him inside. He gets back outside. It's about a 10-yard gain out of something that could have been a stop. That'll bring up second and four for Oklahoma State. Thompson again, this time racked up behind the line of scrimmage by the linebacker, Alan Wilbon. Wilbon does a good job just shooting up in the gap and tackling him for a loss right there. I think this is good that CU's on defense first. It kind of allows them to try to set the tempo of everything. You see Wilbon coming right up the middle, doing a good job wrapping him up and tackling for a loss. Well, it's good if you don't let Oklahoma State score. They're right. They're putting together a little bit of a drive here, but I think it's going to keep CU on their toes. You know, they, they came out. They can't come out lackadaisical. They've got to come out and take it to Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State ain't going to roll over and die for anybody. Third and seven. Three wide receivers out there for Oklahoma State. On the option, Thompson. He has the first down, could be in. Yes, touchdown, Oklahoma State. Very, very, very big series for Oklahoma State. They put together a really long drive, mixed the run in the pass a little bit. Greg Jones just gets beat on contain here. It's a little pitch to the outside. Jones should have the pitch man right there. He gets outside of him. You can see Thompson's feet getting up the sideline and getting in the end zone. Big series for Oklahoma State. That ought to give them a lot of confidence right now. Lawson Vaughn, one of the better place kickers, not just in the Big 8, but in the nation, on for the extra point attempt. And the senior out of Edmond, Oklahoma, converts. So Oklahoma State on the first drive of the ball game puts seven points on the board. It's seven zip. Bob Simmons, go at you. that covers everything get hit to the square builder square is your prime source for paint starting with Blidden and dutch boy brands with free computer color matching to any shade plus specialty brands stains and every painting accessory imaginable there's even advice to make things go smoothly all at great square deal prices builder square we'll get you squared away Bob Simmons and Oklahoma State jumped to a quick 7-0 lead over Colorado. You remember Simmons was one of four CU assistant coaches up for the head coaching job last year when Bill McCartney stepped out. Of course, it was Simmons, Rick Neuheisel, Elliot Uzelak, and Mike Hankwitz. Neuheisel, of course, got the job. All this week, Bob Simmons has been insisting there's no bitterness of being passed over by the bus. But you can be sure, and you have seen, his players understand what a win over CU would mean to him. 
Austin Vaughn kicking off for Oklahoma State. Back to receive it. For CU will be Herschel Trotman and Lyndon Henry. This is Trotman, five yards deep. Decides not to run it out, so CU will start with it at its own 20. Talking with Rick Neuheisel last night, we talked a little bit about John Hessler and how he's going to react today. They took a lot of pressure off of John Hessler. They said, listen, go out, have a good time, have some fun, do what you have to do to win the game, and we'll go from there. Yeah, CU on both sides of the ball has decided to stay very, very basic today and at least next week against Missouri. We don't know yet about Kansas State in the season finale, but at least the next two games for a couple of reasons. Number one, because they do feel they might have overburdened John Hester, at least on offense. And number two, they feel they can stay basic and still beat OSU and Mizzou. The Buffs come out with a trick play. This is Carruth on the end around. And he dances his way up to the 38-yard line, a gain of 18 yards on the play. That's interesting that CU would come out and throw the reverse in the first play of the game. Maybe they see something in, some, in uh, Bob Simmons' defense that they can take advantage of. Their, their ends may be pinching really hard, which gives them the opportunity to get outside because they lose contain. And uh, CU gets a big gain on the play. You see Carruth here. Now, it doesn't even take a step upfield. He gets the ball as quickly as he can, gets around the end, and is going to follow his blocking. Does a good job. Staying square, getting up the field. Good leg drive. That's a big game right away. First down. Hessler throwing wide. That's complete to Chris Anderson. He has run out of bounds at the 46-yard line by the freshman R.W. McWhorters. Here's the rest of that CU offense. The starting running back, Herschel Trotman. The tight end is Lepsis. And the speedy trio of receivers, Caruth, Kidd, and Savoy. And your offensive line, Kyle Smith, Keith Irwin, who scored a touchdown last week against Nebraska, Stoltenberg, Naoli playing on a bad ankle, and Melvin Thomas. John Hessler, the sophomore out of Brighton and Brighton High School. Hal Dowden, the referee, calling timeout on the field. I think you're going to see John Hessler throw a lot of short passes today, get his confidence back, get him into a rhythm, throwing the ball, and get his whole offense confident with him again. Yeah, his percentage has suffered the last couple of weeks. This is Troutman looking for the hole, can't find much of one, and ends up, oh, maybe with a gain of a half yard, maybe a yard. Lewis Adams, the linebacker, makes the stop. Here's the OSU defense to the front seven, Green, Williams, Grossfield. The linebackers are Adams, Alamu Bailey, Billy Stone, and a pretty good one in Javon Langford. And the quarterbacks and safeties are Jones, Kevin Williams, Trent Fisher, and R.W. McCorders. On third and one, Hessler has two receivers lined up to his left. Troutman gets the call, and it looks like he has the first down. For it being as small as Herschel Troutman is, he does such a great job. He ran really well. He's actually, he's run really well all season long. He's got incredible strength for how big he is. He's only about 5 feet 6 or 5 feet 7 inches tall. You'll see him taking a little uh, play off the left side here. And the leg drive that he has for being 5'7 is just amazing. Herschel Troutman came into this ball game with 583 yards on the year. Cowboy football, world cover and of the three sophomore running backs we've been talking about all season, none has less than 275 yards on the ground. And each game, it seems, one of the others steps up to the plate. The trio of running backs that they have at CU, they're all young, they're all extremely talented, and they're all very, very unselfish. They don't care how much time they're playing, they just care and they get in there to do the best job for the team that they can. Hey, you know, when you think about it, as much talent as they all have indiv individually, you haven't heard any of them whining about playing time all year long. That's amazing. On first down, Hessler the play action, a wide open tight end, Matt Lepsis. He is inside the 30. They don't mark him out of bounds. That's a touchdown. I'll tell you what, Phil Savoy Hessler just threw a great block for Lepsis. Unbelievable. Little play action pass by Hessler. CU does a great job executing this. Good play fake. Gets back out the outside. You know, a little drag route by the tight end across the middle. He comes wide open, and you'll see Phil Savoy stay with his man. That's what they teach you in practice every day. Receivers can catch the ball. They can get in the end zone and do all the, the neat little dances. But blocking is the thing that separates good receivers from great receivers. You'll see the block come up here right there. That little block right there springs him for another 30 yards. Yeah, Lepsis does a great tightrope back. 
52 yards for the CU touchdown. And now Voskaricci on for the extra point. Kick is up. He has it. And good. And we have a tie ball game. With 8.53 to go in the first quarter. We're all knotted up at seven. I trained my boy McNeil to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champ. And he did for 89 seconds. He didn't back down from any combinations thrown at him. And he ain't backing down from this one. There's a new Stuffed Crust Pizza from Pizza Hut. Not just cheese, but pepperoni baked right into the crust. So good you'll eat it backwards. Show him, kid. Oh, the new one-two combination cheese and pepperoni Stuffed Crust Pizza. Hey, McNeely, how many slices am I holding? John Elway is the fastest growing Ford dealer in Colorado. We're out to be number one, so we asked Ford for extra allocations, and they delivered. Now John Elway Ford has over 700 new Fords on Colfax in Colorado. And when supply goes up, prices go down. With the discounts on all new 96 Fords, including the all-new Taurus, Explorer, and F-Series pickups, John Elway Ford will do whatever it takes to be the number one Ford dealer in Colorado. Inventory will never be larger, and prices will never be lower. Right now at John Elway Ford. We have athletes hanging out at SportsCenter all the time. The one thing they have in common, though, they all want their highlights on, they all want the publicity, they all want their names spelled right. But some of them tend to take it a little too far. No, really, Carl, I want you to have the car. It's not enough room. Have the car. Hey, is this, uh, is this your Rolex right here? Come on, man, you can take it. I mean, look much better once you get on. Now, come on, Mike. Cherokee, I have a watch. It's really nice. Cherokee, I have a watch. Just take it, man. Please. Come on, Mike. I can't do this. Wait, 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 I, wait, I, wait, I can't wait, wait, do that. Wait, 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 Johnson. Matt Lex is sitting down on the bench, number 88 out of Frisco, Texas. Wonder if any family drove up. We're right next to Texas here in Oklahoma. His first touchdown catch of the year. He went 52 yards with it and tied this ball game up. And now CU is kicking off Jason Leslie into a bit of a win, but gets a good boot off. This is McQuarters from his own one yard line. Hit quickly and downed at the 17. Making the tackle for CU is Clifton Peters. Clifton does a good job staying in his lane, running down the field. Makes a good, solid tackle on a very, very talented return man in RW. Cowboys will take over at their own 18-yard line. First down and 10. Tony Jones and the Oklahoma State offense had a pretty darn good drive to open up this ballgame. Now Jones at the helm again. A three-year starter at Oklahoma State. The pass is incomplete. The intended receiver was Willie Grissom. Right in the bread basket and couldn't hang out. You see Leftis here catch the ball. Nowhere to be found. Oklahoma State defender does a good job beating the defense. But... Missed tackle right there by Oklahoma State, but again, the block by Bill Savoy is the thing that turns this play, it's a good play, into a great play in a touchdown. Tells you how strong the kid is when the defensive back throws his whole weight at him and Lepsis is not just out of bounds when he's about a foot away. And it shows you how strong Bill Savoy is. It's very, very tough as a receiver to hold a block for that long against a defensive back. Well, there was a penalty on CU that last play. The, the, the Buffs were offside, so it's still first down, first and five. This is David Thompson. And he might have been thrown for a loss of the yard line. We talked a little bit earlier about the youth of Oklahoma State and the youth of the receiving core that they have, for example. They have one upperclassman and three freshmen to play. So, so it's... At different times during the year, Oklahoma State has played 13 true freshmen. So Bob Simmons has a lot of guys to build on over his career at Oklahoma State. Oh, there's a lot of building to do here. This school has been on probation three times in recent history. The last probation ending in 1992, and we all know what probation can do to your recruiting. So this program's still a long way off, but people here believe Bob Simmons is the man to bring it back. 
Thompson again across the 25 to the 26. Daryl Price, the defensive end, makes the tackle. Thompson's a, Thompson's a fun running back to watch because he's real patient. He lets the plays develop. He sits in there. He does whatever he can, waits for the hole. He sees a little hole, and he gets acceleration through it. Donnell, Leo Mitty, and, and uh, Daryl Price do a good job driving the when we talk about Simmons bringing this program back, you played under Bob Simmons when he was an assistant coach at CU for seven years. If he can do anything, we know he can recruit. Yes, he can. He can recruit. He's very, very good at it. Third and three. Thompson, but still a couple of yards short of the first down. Matt Russell makes the stop. That'll bring up fourth down, and Oklahoma State will have to punt. When we got off the plane last night, you see a little uh, replay here off the right side. Good job picking his hole. Little leg drive. Matt Russell does a good job squaring up and making a tackle. We get off the plane last night, and Matt Russell, it's cold here, and Matt Russell gets off the plane in a tank top. Everybody else is in a long coat, and Russell is in a tank top. Greg Ivey, a good punter, gets off a deep one for Oklahoma State. Rosgo will let it drop. It's going to take an Oklahoma State roll also. But the Cowboys kick the ball into the end zone. Jeroy Johnson inadvertently looking to down the ball, kicked it instead. And instead of placing CU with its back against its own goal line, the ball will come out to the 20. We're going to take a break. We're all tied up. Mid first quarter. to preserve the clean taste of the Rockies. When they were small, we had a little sports car. And then they got bigger, so we had to get a four-door. So we leased the new Volkswagen Jetta, 219 a month. Nice, huh? German-engineered front-wheel drive Jetta comes with rack and pinion steering, daytime running lights, dual airbags. It's a great driving car. It's got a big back seat. And a huge trunk. Wine liners come from Germany. Maybe that's why they like driving so much. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Many public, many public can help families who can't afford the same kind of energy needs that you and your family may take for granted. News 4 and the Colorado Energy Assistance Foundation hope you'll donate all or a portion of your utility refund. Look for this envelope in the mail, fill out your return stub, and mail it back. Your tax-deductible donation will help warm the hearts and homes of needy Colorado. Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell with you back in Stillwater, Oklahoma. See you at the ball game in a 7-7 tie. The Buffs at their own 20-yard line. John Hessler under center, and he wants to throw. This pass completes to Carruth. Gain of four yards. You see, the, the ball, this is after it's being punted. It's going down. This is just not a smart play by Johnson. He needs to jump on that ball, do whatever he can to contain that ball inside the 10-yard line, to go down there and kick it in the end zone. But see, you get up 10, 10 more yards, which is, is a lot on a football field. Well, that ball takes funny bounces, as we all know. And that time, Jeroy Johnson could not avoid it. Second and six. Get to Troutman. And he has stopped a couple yards short of the first down. One of those making the tackle, the linebacker Javon Lankford, along with defensive back Courtney Gardner. Troutman does a good job here. Little draw action over the right side. He's patient. He waits for his hole, looks for his blocking, gets square. Good leg drive. Keeps going up the middle. Virgil Troutman is just getting better and better and better every game. Brings up third and three for the Buffs. Two wide receivers to the right of Hessler, one running back, Troutman behind him. Hessler rolling right, sees nothing, rolls left, and sees a big orange jersey in his face, and the ball is tipped as Hessler gets it off. Doing the tipping, that linebacker again, Javon Langford. 
Kessler does a good job just trying to get rid of this ball. If he gets sacked, see he was punting from the 10-yard line. Rather now than punting from the 10-yard line, they're punting from about the 26-yard line. So that was very smart on John Hessler's part. And this crowd of about 30,000 pretty jacked up. They see their Cowboys have come out with a lot of emotion, so they're following suit. Andy Mitchell. He's had some problems punting the ball lately. Four blocked on the year. And Andre Richardson to return. Mitchell gets one off. Richardson to the, at his own 35-yard line and hit very quickly. Brought down at the 40 by Darren Fisk. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC TV and the group WCBS television station partners. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this telecast without the express written consent of KCNC TV and the group WCBS television station partners is prohibited. So Oklahoma State with pretty good field position to start their third drive of the ball game. They're at their own 40. The give to David Thompson. He picks up three yards. Oklahoma State's going back to their base offense. They're going to try to shove the ball down your throat. They're going to run it at you from all different directions. And they're going to give the, the ball a lot to David Thompson. Yeah, this isn't quite student body right and student body left like USC, but they do throw a lot of blockers at you when they run that ball, don't they? Well, when you have a talent like David Thompson, you've got to try to get the ball in his hands as much as you can. And Tony Jones is a good running quarterback, but he's not a good throwing quarterback, so it kind of limits their offense a little bit. Second and six. Thompson again. Great play by Wilbon. Throws Thompson for a loss. We saw that play a little bit earlier by Wilbon. He just sees something and shoots the gap, gets in there and makes a good solid tackle. David Thompson lost on the See play. See a little bit better here. You see Thompson uh, in his position, a little counter draw action. He's going to get up there, try to find his hole. You see Wilbon shoot through there and tackle him for a loss. Alan Wilbon is a senior playing high school ball in Dallas was the number one ranked linebacker in the nation. He was the Texas player of the year. And now he's getting a chance today in the starting lineup in for the injured Ron Merkerson. To be the Texas player of the year is a big deal. Quite an accomplishment. Third and 11. Jones from the shotgun. Looking downfield. Almost intercepted. Donnell Liamini had his hands on the ball and couldn't hold on. The intended receiver was the tight end, Alonzo Mays. Donnell almost caught that ball. It may have been tipped by a Colorado player, and Donnell just couldn't get a good, a good read on it. To see him drop back, a little five-step drop, waiting for things to happen. They got cross routes going on in the middle. The ball gets thrown, and I believe it gets tipped by the receiver. It does right there, and Donnell just can't get a hold of it. Here's the punt from Ivy, another good one. Rosga from his own 15 wants to run it back. And let's see where they mark this ball. He's out of bounds at the 37-yard line. So Rosga looking like he had nothing, makes it into something. Rosga does a great job here, staying very, very strong. Concentration on the ball, does a good little move to get away. You see the strength right there. A little quickness to get back outside. They get a little return left on here. Does a good job, and Clifton Peters just wipes out an Oklahoma State play player on the sideline right there. He's being tended to right now. Steve Rosga out of Roseville, Minnesota. Six foot one, 210 pound junior. He's done a really good job. He was thrown in during the Kansas game at, at punt return. They've had some problems early in the year. He came out and he's done a very, very good job just staying with the ball. Ball security is what they always tell you as a punt returner. That's the punter, Greg Ivey, who was shaken up on the play. He's one of the better punters in the nation. That was a 46-yard kick and a 21-yard This is a little bit better angle of the block. You see it right there. It's very close to a clip, but he keeps his helmet in front of the defender's shoulder pads. That's why that's not a clip. Ivy was knocked silly on the play by Roscoe. Now he tried to knock him out of bounds. He looks like he'll be okay, though, and he will return to punt. John Hessler from his own 37. 
incomplete the pass intended for Leftus, and the, he looked a little surprised that the ball got there as quickly as it did. Yeah, he, he was a little bit, might have been a little bit deep on his route, or the ball may have come out a little bit early, and you got to get that head around as quickly as you can and get your hands up because sometimes that ball gets there a little bit differently than you think. See Hessler dropping back a little five step drop. Hessler's get, or, uh, left is going to run a little 10 yard out on the inside, and he just got it there a little bit early. Hessler got rid of that ball just in time. But to no avail. It's second and ten. On the option. Hessler sees the lane, keeps it. But that lane is filled up very quickly by defensive back Kevin Williams. Oklahoma State does a great job stringing this play out. How you beat the option is you try to keep it strung out as long as you can. We're going to go a little option, a little reverse out the right side. See how they keep going. They keep flowing to the left side there. If they string that option out, that will cut down the opportunity for them, for them to make a big play on it. 39 for the Buffs. It's Oklahoma State crowd on its feet. Hessler complete to Anderson. He has the first down and more into OSU territory down to the 42-yard line. Johnny Jones finally stops him along with Kevin Williams. Great pass by Hessler. You see him take his, he'll drop back here, does a good job setting his feet, does a good job putting a little bit on that ball. Anderson, great comeback route, squares up, gets a couple of yards after the catch. Good play. A little bit different angle for you here. You see him stop, come back out to the outside. Squares his shoulders, gets about seven yards after he catches the ball. Pickup of 19, but in actuality, Hessler had to throw that ball about 30 yards. Yeah, he does. It was cross field. He's doing a great job. His confidence levels up, you can tell. First down at the Oklahoma State 42. This is Lyndon Henry, his first carry of the afternoon, and he's inside the 40. Lyndon Henry, part of the trio of running backs that CU has that's been so, so good for him all year long. Lyndon Henry's the kind of running back that when he runs the ball at you, he's going to punish you when he's tackling. Second down. On the afternoon, Hessler is four for six for 83 yards. Right now, he's facing second and six. That's his man, and he could get in. That's Caruth. Very quickly, a host of orange jerseys surround him. For a second there, it looked like he'd take off down the sideline and put seven points on the board. But Oklahoma State makes the tackle, and Caruth is down at the 14. Caruth has been their big play guy all year long. You see him run a little stop route, go back out to the outside. Hessler does a good job throwing the ball to the outside of Caruth. Cruz does whatever he can here to try to get some more yardage out of it. Cruz has had four games this year with over 100 yards receiving, which is pretty impressive. He's averaging 95 yards a game. First down for the Buffs at the OSU 15. This is Henry again. He slices down to the 12. Alamu Bailey to stop. Prior to that catch, Caruth had 37 catches for 760 yards, so he's their deep threat. And he also does the little things that make you good. On the air for Landon Henry, he's averaging almost five yards a carry with three touchdowns, and they all came in one game. Second down. Second and eight for the Bucks. We've got a minute 15 to go first quarter. This is Henry again. He could get in. He does. <laughs> Landon Henry with his fourth running touchdown of the year. And that puts CU ahead. Landon Henry goes over Chris Daoli and Melvin Thomas on the right side. Strings it out. Does a good job getting the defense to overcommit. Cuts it back. Finds his hole and gets into the end zone. Actually, Jeff, that whole offensive line was shifting to the right. Heath Irwin threw a pretty good block there, too. Heath Irwin, you, you know, you talk about Heath Irwin game in and game out. He's always the guy that will show up and play really hard for you. Boscarici gets the point after. And CU gets out to a 14-7 lead. We've got a minute 10 to go in the first quarter, and we'll keep it right here. 
is a little bit different angle for you to look at. Going over the right side, like Les said, they, sw they shifted the offensive line to the right side, get a little bit more power, confuse Oklahoma State's defense a little bit, and Lyndon Henry does a good job using his quickness and his cutting ability to get in the end zone. Yeah, Rick Neuheisel told us last night he felt the CU offensive line could dominate Oklahoma State for the simple reason that the Cowboys are so small up front. The three defensive linemen go just 270, 240, and 255 pounds. And you saw right there, they did a good job dominating. CU's offensive line is very, very big. They're as big as any NFL offensive line out there. They're very strong, they're very powerful, and they have a tremendous amount of pride. Rick was also talking about he made a special point to his seven, seven seniors that this year their, their leadership capacity and the way that they've played has been very impressive to him and they wanted the rest of the team to get them into a bowl that would, would send them out on a good note. See you getting ready to kick off. Oklahoma State with a trio of returns back there. It's Jeroy Johnson, R.W. McWhorters, and Boogie Johnson. McWhorters and Johnson for the Cowboys. I didn't make that name up, Jeff. It says it right on the flip card here. Boogie Johnson. This is McWhorters. Has some room up the middle. But finally racked up at about the 24. Clifton Peters, his second tackle on special teams. The on the return out to the Cowboys 24. First down and 10. Okay. That last scoring drive for CU, they did it primarily on the ground. Seven plays, 69 yards, and took just 240. Lendon Henry did the honors. Another injured player down for Oklahoma State. Looks like Jack Nichols, reserve linebacker. CU has put two really solid drives together. They had the, the drive in the beginning of the game where they went down and they scored. They were three and out on the next series. They came back and they had another solid drive where they mixed the run and the pass. Did a great job getting in the end zone. So their confidence level seems to be coming back. That's one thing that Rick was worried about. His national title hopes for his team were gone. But now they've come out and they're, they're back on track. They're doing things in a positive manner. And that's exactly what he wanted. He was talking... Uh, about how they matched Nebraska with intensity and they played as well as they did. They were just unable to uh, out-execute them. They made too many mistakes and they had too many turnovers. Yeah, I, I think it was pretty simple. I think it was a great team going into Boulder playing a great game. They weren't penalized. They didn't turn the ball over. While CU threw two costly interceptions and were penalized all day long. Plus, you can't discount the fact that Nebraska has possibly the best player in the nation in Tommy Frazier at quarterback, and he played one of his best games in his star-studded career. Well, he threw for more yards than he ran for, and that's different. You know, that's uh, a little bit different for Tommy Frazier. And Nebraska, if you come out and you have no penalties and no turnovers, you are going to be extremely tough to beat. And see, you had 12 penalties, and it absolutely killed him. Uh, speaking of that, they've done a good job today avoiding the penalty. I, I think they've only been flagged one time but it has been a problem the for them all year penalties have been the kind of the backbreaker for cu season this year they're young they've had 81 penalties which is a lot of penalties in the number of games that they've played and you know that's what rick was talking about he wants attention to detail he wants them to come out and execute without making mistakes like that you bet that's a lot because with just nine more penalties this year cu will set the cut record for getting flagged. Yeah, that's not something that Rick wants. You know, Rick is an extremely competitive person, and he's the kind of guy that won't tolerate mistakes. He wants his players to study during the week, study tendencies, study their plays when they go out, not make mistakes that are going to hurt the team. Well, Bob Simmons right now very concerned about one of his players. Jack Nichols is still down on the field, and they brought out a wheelchair, actually. First time I've seen that, a wheelchair on the field instead of a stretcher to uh, help Jack Nichols off the field. Usually when that happens, he's got some type of leg injury. There, it looks like they're, they're pumping some air into an air brace to try to stabilize his leg. We may be able to see what happens here to his leg. He's number 27. He just gonna, he's going to get fallen on from the back side by one of his players. Ooh. Ouch, that, that's not something you want to have happen to you. Those are the kind that you can't avoid because you never see them coming.
you just hope that, that he's going to be okay and he'll be able to return and play either later in the season or next year. Let's go down to the field right now, maybe get a better perspective from uh, Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's obvious that uh, the Oklahoma State players got a leg injury and they are trying to stabilize it. You guys were talking earlier about the mistakes that the played in the you lately and uh, your senior the fact that the Buffs had a, a players meeting after the Nebraska game. Well, Coach Rick Neuheisel also called a coaches meeting after the ball game. I think everyone's sharing in the blame and the disappointment in the Nebraska loss. The coaches also had a meeting to say, hey, you know, part of the reason that we're having all these penalties and mistakes has got to be some of the coaching. We have got to uh, drill into these guys' head that they've got to be disciplined, you know, not to jump offside, not to grab face masks, etc. So the coaching staff also uh, taking a, an introspective look at itself after that Nebraska game and realizing that there's some things they could do better to help this football team be more focused on the field to eliminate some of those mistakes. We've got a minute three to go in the first quarter. There's a timeout on the field right now because of an injured Oklahoma State player. And while we have that timeout, we'll tell you about CU's game next week. It's the final home game of the season for the Buffs next Saturday against Missouri. There are tickets left. The Buffs will try and get that home magic working once again. And we'll have that game on News 4 in Denver. Kickoff will be at noon. Well, Jack Nichols is in the wheelchair and being carted off the field, so we'll get back to action right now. First down for Oklahoma State after a CU punt. Tony Jones is the quarterback. And OSU at its own 24-yard line. Jones comes out firing. Pass is completed to Kent Luck, and he picks up three yards on the play before T.J. Cunningham brings him down. CU's defense is starting to swarm to the ball. They're letting the, the receiver will catch the ball here on a little six-yard route thrown out there, and about six CU defenders hit Luck right after he caught the ball. You'll see a little three-step drop, a hitch route, which is a six-yard route on the outside. He'll stop, he'll catch the ball, and you'll see a host of CU players come in here and punish him for catching that ball. That's called bad luck. <laughs> Absolutely or no luck. Second and six, Oklahoma State with three wide receivers in the set. On the option. Tony Jones keeps it. And a good Tony tackle Jones. made by Daryl Price, but Daryl comes up limp. Across the 30 to the 33. Daryl's had some problems with some knee injuries in the past. So that may, he may have aggravated one of those injuries. They're trying to run a little option here to the right side, left side of CU's defense. And they do a great job containing it. Price does a great job from the back side of tackling That's the quarterback for Oklahoma one. State, Tony Colorado Jones. 14, your Oklahoma State, one Seven. yard short of the third down, and that's the end of the first quarter. See you ahead. Between coaching, broadcasting, and family, there's not a lot of time for anything else. That's why I like First Bank. They're locally owned with over 60 locations right here in Colorado. You can call First Bank anytime, 24 hours a day. And the best deal of all is free checking. That means no minimum balance, no monthly service charges, and no annual fee in an ATM card, all for a full year. First Bank, check them out. Before you buy anything anywhere, come see what a deal and dog deal means at Skyline Volkswagen, where the sky's the limit. It means you'll never buy a Volkswagen for less. Jettas, Golfs, GTIs, convertibles. Take your pick and get a great deal and duck deal. Plus, easy financing for everyone. We need your trade, paid for or not. In Denver, there's just one place to buy a Volkswagen. So don't make a mistake that could cost you thousands. See us now, because nobody beats a deal and duck deal. Nobody. Skyline Volkswagen. Open late, just west of I-25 on 104th. It's worth the short drive. Some run. Some swim. Some jump. But only one Olympic team will lift, pack, and ship their way to Atlanta from around the world. From athletic equipment to telecommunications equipment that will help bring the games to the world. If they're here, chances are the company that guarantees delivery from around the globe got them here. Excepting those who made it entirely on their own. UPS, worldwide Olympic sponsor. Today, 
Today's game is brought to you by your Front Range Cheap and Eagle dealers, by Blackjack Pizza, by Ankmar Door, and by Samsonite. Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell with you in Stillwater, Oklahoma. We're getting ready to start the second quarter with the CU Buffs leading the Oklahoma State Cowboys 14 to 7. OSU with the ball on third and one. They're at their own 33. And the pitch. This is Richardson. Finally caught from behind by T.J. Cunningham. And in the meantime, Richardson brings it down to the CU 43-yard line. That's a little pitch play off the left side. You see him pick and pull. Good job by the offensive line. Getting the, the hole wide open there. And he does a good job getting upfield. Saving tackle by T.J. Cummings. Here again, he's going to come right at you. You'll see the hole that opens up. You'll see his cutting ability. T.J. Cunningham does a good job of being patient, letting the running back make his cut and making a tackle. That's a gain of 25 yards for Andre Richardson. And he's their backup running back. That's where they've been successful. They've been successful running the ball. Keeping it on the ground, keeping the ball out of the air. First down for OSU at the CU 43. They're down 14 to 7. Tony Jones, the lineup, and the pitch to R.W. McQuarters. He is inside the 30. Now remember, R.W. McQuarters is also their starting cornerback. So you see the talent that he has. They bring him in on offense, and they bring him in on defense. He'll run the hitch route. We've talked about that route about four times today, Oklahoma's drone. Little three-step drop. Six-yard hitch by the receiver. R.W. McCorders has, has the ability to get open after he catches the ball and gains the yards, and that's exactly what he did there. Now, CU expected R.W. McCorders to play both ways today. In fact, uh, we talked with Rick Neuheisel about him last night. The word he used to describe McCorders was gifted, and we're seeing it so far this afternoon. First down for Oklahoma State. The option. Tony Jones does a good job dancing away, and... Picking up a few yards on this play, a gain of three. Now to the Colorado 26, gain of three. Uh, Tony Jones, they're going to run the little option over the right side, and they just got a kind of a busted play, and it, it messed up a little bit. First quarter stats for you, Oklahoma State outrushes the Buffs by 27 yards, but the Buffs outpass them and outscore them 14-7. to seven. Pretty clean game so far, just one penalty and no turnovers. That's exactly what Rick stressed during practice and in all of his meetings. We've got to cut down our mistakes and definitely cut down the turnovers. Second and seven. Shovel pass to Richardson. Doesn't fool CU. He only gets a couple of yards on the play. Donnell, the immediate, Nick Ziegler there to make the stop. That was kind of an interesting play. Tony Jones is going to reverse pivot out here, make it look like a, uh, a draw play and does a little shovel pass up the middle and CU does a good job stringing it out. Donnell Leo Mitty on the tackle. They only got about a three yard gain. Third down. And the long we forward. talk about how effective David Thompson and Andre Richardson are at running back for OSU. This school is known for its rich tradition of running backs. Of course Thurman Thomas, Terry Miller, Gerald Hudson and, and the best of all, young man you played with in Detroit, Jeff, Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders is probably the best running back I have ever seen. He does things in practice that would blow your mind. I mean, he is a very, very talented person and probably one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. The 1988 Heisman Trophy winner, Barry Sanders. We have a timeout on the field taken by the Cowboys. With 12.35 to go in the second quarter, the Buffs lead the Cowboys 14 to seven. We'll take a break ourselves. The new Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo offers full-time four-wheel drive to handle rough terrain. Improved quadricoil suspension for a smooth, controlled ride. The most powerful V8 in its class. And with up to $1,000 in option package values, it's designed with your budget in mind. But wouldn't you know it? Just when driving starts to get fun. Someone comes along and ruins it. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. take some things very seriously. All right, the blackjack's here. I wondered if you were going to make it. You know how serious I take my blackjack pizza. 
Blackjack Pizza. This is serious pizza at a ridiculously low price. Get a large two-topping pizza for only $6.99. Call Colorado's own Blackjack Pizza. Boy, I love this Denver Post. You got the Post without consulting me. Yeah, I got six months free. Yeah, but I'm the man. Well, man, you need Empire Magazine on Sunday. Western people, Western food, Western getaways, and Friday's bigger weekend is more fun than ever, plus six months free. That totally undermines my hunter-gatherer role. What? You want to spear it off the porch tomorrow? Hmm? Mm, spear good. Mm. Buy six months of the Post, get six free, plus 6 a.m. delivery. Call 832-3232. Oklahoma State facing third and four. Down by a touchdown, but down to the CU 24-yard line. The Cowboys just burned their first time out of the half. They keep it on the ground. This is Thompson has the first down, and he is inside the CU 15-yard line. Thompson is a very talented back. We've talked about him all day long. We'll probably end up talking about him much more during the rest of the day because this is what Oklahoma State does. You see a little handoff to the left side. He does a good job using his speed to get outside. And P.J. Cunningham has made some very good tackles, saving some touchdowns today. Earlier, Andre Richardson broke in the open for a big gainer, and P.J. Cunningham made the tackle there also. Don't have the official numbers yet, but I believe David Thompson has gone over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. And this will probably be the third straight year he leads Oklahoma State in rushing. So very quietly, he has gone down in the record books with some of the great in Cowboys history. This time they keep it on the ground with Thompson, but he's thrown for a one-yard loss. Nick Ziegler made the tackle. Matt Russell did a good job popping his head in there and making him change direction. Thompson is a guy that can change direction really quick, but Nick Ziegler closed the door on the backside and did a good job. I'll tell you how good Thompson is. He had a 91-yard run against, of all teams, Nebraska. The best rushing defense in the nation. Thompson has officially gone over the 1,000-yard mark. Second and 10 for Oklahoma State. They're at the CU 15. Over the middle, complete. And stopped at the one-yard line is the tight end, Alonzo Mays. Donnell Liamini and Rosga keep him out of the end zone. That is exactly the same type play which he ran earlier to Lexus, where they fake, they roll, they re reverse, re roll out. You'll see it here, this is a little bit better. He'll, he'll actually run to the right side, waiting for his tight end to do a little six-yard out route. Finds a hole in the defense, does a good job going up and getting it, and getting close to the end zone. That looks like a jump pass from Tony Jones. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was different. I thought, actually, that he dragged the back side, but the tight end actually just ran a little six-yard out route to the right side and found a hole in the defense. Confusion on the CU side of the ball. There's a flag down. A couple of bucks came running out onto the field as Oklahoma State punches it in. The penalty will probably be against CU, which means the touchdown probably will stand. Outside against Colorado is line. It is offsides against Colorado, and that's the type of mistake that they can't afford to have down there close to the goal line where they can where they can get in the end zone like that. You'll see Tony Jones just hop in there behind that big offensive line, little quarterback uh, uh, up the middle, and he does a good job getting in the end zone. Boston Vaughn on to try and kick the game-tying extra point. And we are all mounted up again, this time at 14. With 11 minutes to go in the half. See you 14, Oklahoma State, the same. Change the way you feel about driving on ice. We're at an ice rink to show you a breakthrough in tire technology. The Blizzak Ice Tire. The first winter tire with Bridgestone's patented multi-salt compound designed to bite through snow and stick to ice. In fact, at only 30 miles per hour, a set of Blizzaks sound 35 feet shorter than a set of popular all-season radials. Blizzak from Bridgestone. If you're not using them, it's stopping you. Get a free ski pass for Silver Creek when you purchase four Blizzaks by November 11th. There are a lot of compelling reasons for buying a Dodge Ram. A potent line of Magnum engine. The most available towing of any pickup. Payload capacity of up to two and a half tons. But perhaps the weightiest argument 
is this. Dodge Ram has higher resale than Ford, Chevy, or GMC. The rules have indeed changed. Hi, I'm Sean of Colorado Sewer Service. For over a decade, our family has been dedicated to keeping households running smoothly 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, at no extra charge. So when your drains won't go down, call the best name in town. That's Colorado Sewer Service at 424-0448. Well, we thought unranked Oklahoma State might come out fired up for their head coach, Bob Simmons, knowing what it would mean to him to beat CU, the school that used to employ him. And we were right, Oklahoma State with a touchdown just now to tie things up at 14. And a good kickoff from Lawson Vaughn will not allow CU to run the ball out of the end zone. The last scoring drive for the Cowboys. Went 10 yards, 76 plays, and they ate up a little over five minutes on the clock. The quarterback, Tony Jones, pushed it in. Coach Bob Simmons said this week earlier in, in, a, uh, in an article, he said, we've got to go into the game with a lot of confidence, knowing that you don't make mistakes, you can stay in the game and have a chance to win in the fourth quarter. That's an old axiom. All you have to do is stay close and have a chance to do it at the end of the ball game. Oklahoma State certainly doing that so far. His first carry of the day, Marlon Barnes gets a couple of yards. Javon Langford makes the stop. Javon Langford for the Cowboys. He will probably start mixing all three running backs, keep them all fresh. All of them are very talented. If you keep them fresh, they don't get tired. They can do what they what they have to do to gain yards for CU up the middle and on the outside. All three of them have 100-yard games to their credit. Barnes' best game, he went for 100 against Iowa State. He's averaging five and a half yards a carry. On second and eight, this is Savoy. He gets the first down up to the 31-yard line. A tackle made by the freshman before. CU goes back to their short passing game, little three-step drop, and you're going to hear me say this hitch pattern probably a lot today. That's what a hitch pattern looks like. He's going to go try to make a move. Beat one guy, if you beat one guy, usually you turn it into a big gainer. Oklahoma State's defense does a good job slowing him down and tackling him. Savoy has 41 catches on the year. He leads the CU Buff squad. Ray Carruth right behind him with 38. And Savoy's only a sophomore, so he's got a lot of years ahead of him to even get better than he is right now. Well, the whole uh, wide receiver core still has at least a year left. Carruth a junior, Kidd a junior, Savoy a sophomore. On first down, Hessler with a lot of time going over the middle. He wants Kidd. And I believe the defender, Jeroy Johnson, got his hands on the ball before Kariz, before uh, Kidd tipped it away. Jeroy Johnson does a good job. Hessler has a lot of time to throw this ball. He's going to go through his reads, find out who he's got to, to uh, throw the ball to. And Jeroy Johnson does a great job closing and making a play on that ball. He almost picked that ball off. Mr. Johnson, a senior out of New Orleans, already has one interception on the year. His nickname is Furious because of his fondness for that uh, breakfast food. This is Marlon Barnes, maybe a yard. Lorenzo Green, the defensive lineman, the tackle. Oklahoma State's starting to do a really good job plugging up the middle and doing what they have to do to shut down CU's inside running game. We're calling it third and nine. And once again, this cowboy crowd on its feet. That's where the quickie over the middle, but well short of the first down. Look at all the orange jerseys converging on Phil Savoy. The first one to get to Savoy was Flip Metcalf. A little delayed slant route on the outside. Here you'll see Savoy make a good catch. But Oklahoma State's defense does a spectacular job. Clint Metcalf staying at home and making that tackle.
after receiving the punt for Oklahoma State is Andre Richardson. Annie Mitchell. Quite a high punt. And it goes out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Mitchell, out of bounds. It'll be at the Oklahoma State 34-yard line. We're all tied up at 14. We've got 8.24 to go in the first half. Oklahoma State's done a good job. They've, they've put a couple of very, very impressive drives together. You know, they've had a couple big plays by their running backs, and they've done whatever it's, it's taken to get themselves in the end zone, and we've got a tie ball game going on. You know, you've got to kind of sit back and wonder how much Bob Simmons actually knows about CU's offense and CU's defense and the players that they have there. Well, he was asked about that, and, and he says Rick Neuheisel is doing things so differently that it's hardly recognized. This is Richardson. A little off -center. But back to that thought, even though he might not recognize many of Rick Neuheisel's schemes, he does know the strengths and weaknesses of the individual CU players. Absolutely, and that's something that is very, very good. You'll see a little screen pass out here. They're trying to throw to Richardson, and CU's uh, uh, defense does a good job swarming and making that tackle. But, you know, back to Simmons. Simmons does know a lot about the tendencies of the players as individuals, not only as a defense, but the individual players, what weaknesses they have, and they may be, may be trying to exploit those weaknesses right now. Tony Jones is going to try and exploit it on second and 11. This is David Johnson. Finds the save and gets the ball up to his own 40. There's a penalty flag on the field. Right now, Oklahoma State four yards short of the first down. So call that a gain of seven if it stands. But it's not going to. Penalty against Oklahoma State. That's really one of the only mistakes that Oklahoma State has made all day long. They've been pretty clean. And now uh, you see Bob Simmons there, a little bit upset that that happened because he wants to keep drives like this going. Simmons, a native of Livingston, Alabama, 47 years old, married to Linda, who we got to know when they were in Boulder for seven years. Bob and Linda have three kids. You know, nine, in 1993, Bill McCartney made Bob Simmons the assistant head coach. Bob Simmons is a very good coach. He's a mighty special teams coach. When I was a senior, we had a really, really good puff return, kick return. You know, pretty much a solid special teams unit. He did a great job with all that. So, you know, he's a very talented coach, and I'm sure that he's going to do a good job down here. It's just going to take him some time because they are a very young team and he's got to put in what he knows. He's going to take new facilities here also. We'll get into that in a second. Tony Jones on second and 16. They get the ball on the ground. Greg Jones in there to make the stop. Greg Jones is the type of player that's going to make big plays for you all year long. You're going to see him come in here. He gets in here in a hurry. He comes off CU's left side, our right side, gets in there and tackles uh, OSU for a loss. My mistake, that was second and 16. And now that Greg Jones made that stop, it's now third and 21. Let's see if Neuheisel sends in the crowd on the blitz, knowing that Oklahoma State probably will pass the ball. Well, a conventional rush, and Jones has time to go deep. The receiver well covered by T.J. Cunningham. It was R.W. McCorders who couldn't quite get to the ball. R.W. McCorders is their big play guy on offense and on defense, probably on special teams, too. The guy can do it all. You know, that's the problem with, with a totally running attack. They don't throw the ball very much. You can't really say a total running attack, but a very, very, you know, high percentage of runs where it limits your offense on what it can do when you get into third and 21. It's tough without passing to get a first down. Well, Greg Ivey looks to be okay after getting hit earlier in the game and helped off the field. He's averaging almost 44 yards a punt. This one an end over end. Robka has another shot at a run back. 
Unfortunately for him, it's not a very good one. Lewis Adams stops it after a return of about eight yards. All right, we're going to take a break with 6.04 to go in the half. We're all tied up at 14. It's the 10-hour used truck mega sale indoors at Big Mike Naughton Ford. 100 used trucks, all clearance price starting at just $3,000. Imports and domestics, regular cabs, super cabs, duallys, and 4x4s. Free six-month warranties till noon. And remember, I can finance almost anyone regardless of credit. 100 used trucks from just $3,000. Saturday only beginning at 10 a.m. The 10-hour used truck mega sale indoors at Big Mike Naughton Ford. Monday on UPN, two men alone. Hey! Wait! One on an uncharted planet, the other on planet Earth. To survive, your coach will need a spirit guide. Thomas Bell will need a self-appointed bodyguard. Your one and only guardian angel. We're talking two hours of explosive drama. Prepare for an all-new Star Trek Voyager, followed by an all-new Nowhere Man with special guest star Dean Stockwell. Monday night, starting at 7 on UPN 20. Well, you don't give them much thought, unless you're like me, the Ankmar door guy. I love them! Occasionally, your trusty garage door breaks down. That's when you need to call Ankmar door. Our service people are the best. Doesn't matter if you're fixing a broken spring or replacing a damaged section. Hey, nice butt shot. Or installing a brand new door. Ankmar is ready to help. So give us a call. Now, with any service, receive a garage door tune-up absolutely free. Ankmar doors. You gotta love them! A little bit better than halfway through the second quarter. See you with the ball in a 14-14 game. This is London Henry pushing off the would-be tacklers and pushing the ball in Oklahoma State territory for a nice gainer. Let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh will tell us about the Buffs' problems at left tackle right now. Thank you very much, Les. Kyle Smith just uh, walked off the field. He's headed for the Oklahoma State locker room to get x-rayed. He's uh, injured his left foot. Uh, very similar to the injury earlier in the ball game, uh, he had somebody fall on his left foot, so he's going off for x-rays. And you might remember that Clint Moore, who was starting at left tackle initially, has uh, left the team because of some personal problems. So the Buffs at left tackle are now down to their third string offensive tackle on the left side. A very big concern for Rick Ruhais on the offense. Back to you guys. Lyndon Henry goes over the left side. Some nice block thrown by Andrew Welsh, who's filling in right now. And another first down for the Buffs. They are down to the Oklahoma State 28-yard line. The last two plays, they've gone to Lyndon Henry. He's a very tough back. You see him take a handoff off the left side. Quick move with his feet right there. Gets back outside, outside where he's strong and can, can uh, run over runners like that. Now, he has good speed for how big he is, too. He's six feet tall, 190 pounds. A sophomore out of Port Arthur, Texas. And he has shown flashes of brilliance. Even though he's not getting the ball, quite as much as Herschel Trotman. This time they try the middle, and Henry sends an Oklahoma State player flying. It was Billy Stone, the linebacker. He'll get credit for the tackle, but he'll also end up with a headache after that one. You're going to see Lennon Henry here come right up the middle. Billy Stone tries to head him up, face him, do whatever he can to tackle him, and he is going to pay the price right there. But he does. Right in the sternum. Yes, he does, but he does make the tackle. And it's not how you make it, it's if you make it. Oh, it's if you remember making it. <laughs> That's right. As a linebacker, you really don't care, though. <laughs> Second and five. Hessler dumps it off to Tennyson McCartney, and he is stopped about a half yard short of the first down by the free safety, Trent Fisher. Hessler had Matt Lepsis wide open running down the middle, but he did what he thought was right, and he hit Tennyson McCartney in the flat. He, he gets uh, a good gain out of it. They got about a yard left for a first down. You see him roll out Third to down. his left side, Less get the one. ball off to Tennyson McCarty, which is it's smart. It's a short pass. It's a high percentage pass, and they almost got a first down. We'll see if they can get it here. That's McCarty's first catch of the afternoon at his eighth on the year. His highlight so far has been a touchdown catch against Texas A&M. On third and one. Henry picks up the first down fumble. But it looks like CU keeps it. And they're down to the Oklahoma State 15. Lyndon Henry going to come off the right side, going to take a handoff. He's switching it into his hands. Needs to cover that ball up with both hands. You'll see it pop out here. And Ray Caruth does a good job 
Get in there, getting on it. Norman Williams from uh, Oklahoma State did a good job grabbing that ball and getting it out of there. It gives Oklahoma State an opportunity for a turnover. Henry comes out. We'll have to take a look at his helmet. And into the ball game at running back now is Herschel Trotman. On first down. See you trying to retake the lead. We're all tied up at 14. Tesla going to the end zone. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Savoy. He just couldn't get the ball in time. There's a penalty flag on the field. That's a dangerous pass put up there by Hessler, wasn't it? Yeah, he probably just should have thrown that one out of bounds. Well, not only was it incomplete, but CU will be pushed back a few yards. A holding call against the Buffs. Going back to Lyndon Henry and fumbling a ball. If there's anything that a coach doesn't like is when you fumble the ball in the red area inside the 20-yard line when you have the chance to at least get three points in a field goal, you do not want to make a mistake in the red area. I've always wondered how they got the phrase red zone when, when the field is green, actually. Uh, probably because if you make your coach mad, he's pretty red coming off the sideline. So CU, after the penalty, pushed back to the Oklahoma State 29-yard line. Hessler so far today, 8 of 11 for 124 yards and one touchdown. Right now he's facing first and 23. Well, you don't get that call very often. And Hessler whips that ball out of bounds. He was looking for Phil Savoy, but Phil would have to be about 8 foot 3 to have had a chance to catch that one. We may have had a little uh, breakdown in communication there between Hessler and Savoy, the wide receiver, because, like you said, he would have had to have been about 10 feet tall to make that catch. You see Hessler back up out of here and throw this ball, and you know by his reaction right there <laughs> that he's not happy with that pass. He didn't even want to see where it landed. <laughs> immediately turned away and now he's facing second and 23. over the middle complete ray Carruth makes the catch for no gain and there's a flag down lewis adams made the stop and it's going to be another holding call against cu this is what we've been talking about all game long when you get down into the red area or even anywhere on the field and you make these type of mistakes they stall your drive. They can shut your drive down. That's what they have got to eliminate the rest of the season and for the rest of this game. I think we might have jinxed them, Jeff. We talked about only one penalty for five yards in the first quarter and how they were doing a better job than they have been all year. And, and now all of a sudden, on this drive alone, two holding penalties, which pushes them back yet another 15 yards. Maybe we'll, we'll call this the red area for Rick because Rick's pretty red right now. <laughs> He's not very happy with his offense. They're going the wrong way. It's second and 38. They're not even in field goal range anymore. A good rush put on Hessler. He escapes. That could be intercepted. And another flag on the field. Ray Carruth, the intended receiver, got a hand on the ball in the midst of three Oklahoma State Cowboys. Ray Carruth did an excellent job just knocking this ball out of bounds because if he doesn't knock it out of bounds, it's intercepted by Oklahoma State. Well, this time, the penalty goes in CU's favor and against the Cowboys. You see Ray Carruth going up and doing whatever he has to do so this ball does not get picked off because there's two Oklahoma State defenders back there that would be more than happy to pick that ball off for Bob Simmons. But Ray Carruth does a good job knocking it down, and that's what your coach teaches you. If there's a ball that's up for grabs, you start playing defensive as a wide receiver, and you get that ball on the ground. That is an automatic first down for CU. So they went from second and 38 to a first down at the Oklahoma State 28-yard line. And they keep it on the ground. Landon Henry, 
An offensive line blew open a nice hole, and Henry brings it inside the 20. Before Javon Langford makes the stop. To the 19. On the stop, 58. Javon Langford. Javon Langford does a great job stopping Lennon Henry here. You see him picking his hole, trying to make a cutback, use his block, and doing whatever he has to do to get up the field. And Javon Langford does a good job wrapping him up and getting him on the ground. I feel like I'm watching a ping pong match here. 15 yards to the left, 15 yards to the right, 15 yards to the left, and now CU is going to the right again. And back in the red area. On second and one. Henry, the first down. A nice spin move gets him down to the 11 yard line. Trent Fisher, the Brendan Henry. Down near the Cowboys team. First down and 10. Lennon Henry is very impressive. We've talked about him a lot today. He's starting to get a lot more carries than he's used to. You see him cutting off the backside. CU's offensive line doing a great job. And uh, Lennon leaves Kevin Williams grabbing for air there for a little while. Well, we talked about Marlon Barnes, his best game. He went for 100 yards against Iowa State. Lennon's best game of the year also against Iowa State. He went for 111 yards. Right now he has 77. Under two minutes to go, first half. Henry again pushes his way down to the six. Call it a game of five. Fisher the tackle. Down to the six. Lennon's hot right now. It's just kind of like a basketball game. You start feeding the guy that's doing a good job. Lennon's coming off the right side here. Offensive line again doing a great job. He gets himself square up the field. And like we said, not only is he punishing the OSU guys, but he's punishing the wide receivers down the field blocking for him. But Shiverini does a good job holding on to his guy and trying to get some extra yards for his running back. That's good team football. Henry now up to 82 yards on the afternoon. Well, CU burns its first time out, so each team now has two TOs left this half. The Buffs are down to the six-yard line. They're looking at second and six. Excuse me, second and five. Well, coming up at halftime, Mark McIntosh will have a live interview on the field with Rick Neuheisel and hear Rick's thoughts about that first half. Mark also will have a chat with Linda Simmons, wife of Oklahoma State head coach and former CU assistant Bob Simmons. CU's Dirk Martin tells us about a program at the university voted number one in the country. Plus, we'll have all the highlights and stats from that first half. Well, see, so you got a little lucky here with the penalty call that gave him the first down down in Oklahoma State Territory. You know, that's uh, luckily for CU, they have that opportunity, and they're doing a good job with it right now. You saw Rick talking to John Hessler and, and about the strategy as you see what CSU is doing to UTEP in the second quarter, 14 to 3, Wyoming down to Utah. R Rick brought up a good point with us last night. It's not so much he's disappointed in his guys, he says he's somewhat disappointed in himself for not doing a better job as the quarterback's coach with John Hessler. He got thrown into kind of a crazy situation being his first year as a head coach with Coy Detmer going down, having to put John Hessler in. Everybody has kind of a different way that they like to be coached, and I think he's just kind of finding John Hessler's way right now. Second and five, deep in OSU territory. This is Herschel Trotman, throws for a loss. Norman Williams, the big nose tackle, gets in there. Oklahoma State does a good job stuffing the line of scrimmage here. And Troutman actually gets hurt on this play, gets hit from the backside. Uh, Norman Williams, the nose guard, does a good job shedding his block off of Stoltenberg, getting in there and making the tackle. Oklahoma State's defense is starting to swarm around and, and make some big tackles. And you lose a guy like Herschel Troutman, and that's a big loss for CU. Norman Williams. He's only 5'10", but he has 240 pounds on him. Let's talk about compact. There's an injured buff on the field. Looks like it might be Herschel Trout. This is where having three very talented running backs helps your football team. You don't lose a beat if Herschel stays out. You don't want him to stay out, but you've got two other running backs right behind him that can get in there and do the job. Looks like he'll be okay. Gets up under his own power. But the way he's looking like that, it looks like he probably got the wind knocked out of himself, and he'll be back. Hey, I think you're right. He's pointing to his stomach. 
Either that or he had something bad for breakfast. <laughs> this is the 12th play of the drive coming up. We started with the ball back on the CU 39-yard line, and right now we're down to the Oklahoma State 7. Well, this drive has eaten up a tremendous amount of time. We're closing in on a minute left to go in the second half. You know, with all the penalties and, and, and stuff like that, CU's had the ball for a long time. We're under a minute to go in the first half. And CU takes another timeout. Don Hessler saunders over to the sideline. You know, back to Rick Neuheisel. He's, he's extremely competitive. He doesn't want one of his quarterbacks to go down and the other quarterback not to get in there and do as good of a job as, as the guy that went down. So he takes a lot of pride in coaching his players to not miss a beat if one of them goes down. That's the kind of head coach that you want. You want a guy that cares about his players and how they perform. Well, don't be surprised by this score. Oklahoma State, an unranked team, really struggling throughout the year with a 2-6 and six record, staying close to CU. We had a feeling these Cowboys kids would be fired up for the head coach Bob Simmons. Plus, I mean, let's face it, CU has played down or up to the level of its competition all year long. Yes, they have. They have not played very well against teams that they should be beating by a lot of points. And uh, unfortunately, they lost the Kansas game. They should have beaten Kansas. They came out and lost to Nebraska. Too many mistakes in that game. So they've got to come in. They've got to go in at halftime and make sure that they get the things done that they need to have done to come in and perform much better in the second half. All right, now the Buffs with third and six. They're at the Oklahoma State seven-yard line. Three wide receivers. Hessler trying to find Savoy, who is held up at the goal line by the freshman R.W. McCord. That'll bring up fourth down. See, he's trying to, try to take advantage of a little height differential between uh, R.W. McCorders and Bill Savoy. What they'll do is they'll try to run a little, he does, does an inside release here, tries to get outside, leaves himself some, some uh, uh, room on the sidelines for Hester to drop the ball in there, and R.W. McCorders does a good job staying with Bill Savoy. Neil Voskaritschian on for a 23-yard field goal attempt. In this area, he is five for six on the year. Make that six for seven. Voskaritschian converts the three points, and CU takes another lead, 17-14, with 43 seconds to go in the half. Buffalo 17, Cowboys. Oh, good size Colorado contingent on hand for this ball game. You see them right there. I think half of them were on the plane ride with us. Yeah, half of them were on the plane ride or on the bus ride or whatever kind of ride we took coming in here. We took a lot of them. <laughs> well, fortunately, we are able to land at the Stillwater Airport. It is big enough to handle a, a 727. <laughs> Unfortunately, the runway is fairly short. <laughs> that 50-yard <laughs> runway is tough to land on. <laughs> Took out a few corn husks on the way in, but I think we made it okay. We came down almost as if we were in a helicopter. <laughs> I think we fell straight down, didn't we? Yeah, we felt like it. There's a very interested fan in the game right there. He's thinking about, uh, I don't know, maybe a haircut after the game. The, uh, the next Grateful Dead concert. <laughs> and no jacket. And it's getting cold out here. It is getting cold. They're talking about a storm system coming in tonight. Thankfully, we missed it. And I don't think it'll be here in the next couple of hours. The sky's still fairly clear. At least we're hoping it doesn't get That's here in the next right, couple of hours. I'll see you just taking a 17 to 14 lead near the end of the first half. Jason Leslie kicking off. This is R.W. McCorders from his own 10-yard line. He skips his way up to the 28. Ryan Sutter makes the stop. There is a flag on the field. I believe we're going to get an offsides on the kicking team of, of CU right now. I think one of their guys got a little anxious and got down there a little bit ahead of the kicker before he kicked the ball. CU put together a nice scoring drive. It was filled with penalties on both sides, but... Eventually, the Buffs get three points from Neil Voskaritschian. 
Looks like we're going to get a kick. Redone. Yes, we are. CU kicking unit coming back out. And they'll kick it from the 30 yard line now. Pushed back five yards. A little bit of a win behind Jason Leslie combined with his strong leg. Still shouldn't hurt the bus too much. Well, what do you think Bob Simmons is thinking right now, Jeff? My guess would be he's thinking of getting a, one of his return men to get a big return, get some field position, and give it whatever he has. 37 seconds left. You can probably get three or four good plays in. You know, try to get it down at least in field goal range where they can get three points out of it. And Oklahoma State has been able to move the ball this afternoon on that bus defense. Leslie with a line drive. This time, Gerard Johnson fumbles the ball, picks it up at his own eight-yard line. And a couple more flags down the field. What was a clean game has quickly turned very sloppy in the last five minutes. I think Ryan Sutter, the backup strong safety, had a little face mask penalty. Face mask. Against Colorado. get a better look of it here. We have a little mishandle of the ball down there. Coach would kind of go crazy when that happens, but he gets up. You'll see Ryan Sutter come into your picture and grab onto the face mask, and uh, the rest going to see that usually most of the time when there's not very many people around. Looks like he was bringing down a steer, and it'll cost him five yards. So the ball up to the Oklahoma State 30-yard line with 28 seconds left on the clock. Well, Colorado averages 10 penalties a game. They're halfway there in the first half. Tony Jones under center. Oklahoma State keeps it on the ground. This is David Thompson going against the grain. It's a big pickup. He's in CU territory. And tripped up at the 31-yard line. Nobody touched him. Thompson just lost his feet. David Thompson's going to show you why he's a great running back, why he's rushed over 1,000 yards. See him going to the right side. Nothing there. He decides to cut back. Does a good job, uses his speed to get back outside, gets up the field. We talked earlier about trying to get your team in a position where you can kick a field goal, and he just did that. You'll see a little bit different angle of it here, him cutting back across the field, and you'll see the speed that he has. He gets outside, he gets his shoulder square, and now he's gaining positive yards all the way up the field. He might have gone longer, but he tripped himself up right there and goes down. So Oklahoma State is almost in field goal range for their for their field goal tick kicker to tie up this game with 17 seconds left in the first half i would say right now they are in field goal range you're talking about a 48 49 yard kick as it stands right now and lost and vaughn has hit for more than 50 yards this year already i'm sure bob simmons would like it if they could get it down there around the 20 yard line where the percentage of the kick is a lot higher and he can make that, and they can go in at halftime with a tie, and Oklahoma State really has played a solid football game up to this point of the game. There is a little bit of a wind blowing in Oklahoma State's face, so a 50-yarder might not be so easy. In the meantime, they have 17 seconds to move the ball downfield a bit more. There's Lawson Vaughn right there, out of Edmond, Oklahoma. With 17 seconds left, my guess would be Bob Simmons to keep this ball on the ground, not take the chance of, of having a, a turnover. Tell his running back, listen, you have got to hang on to this ball. Get us in field goal range. They're actually in field goal range now, but get us down close enough to where our field goal kicker's comfortable and he's not thinking about a 48-yard kick. Oklahoma State was huddled on the sideline and didn't realize the clock was ticking away, and now the Cowboys have to burn their final timeout. A little bit of mismanagement on the sideline right there. Yeah, that's a mistake that you just can't have right now. You're 17 seconds left in the half. You're in a position where you can tie the game up with a field goal. You've got to make sure that you come out, everybody's on the same page, and you get an offensive play in there that can gain you some yardage to get a little bit closer so they can kick a closer field goal. 
So a first down for Oklahoma State. They are down at the CU 31-yard line. Probably time for, what would you say, a couple of plays with 17 seconds left before they have to bring that field goal unit up. Yeah, with no timeouts left, they got to make sure that if you do have a running player, you do throw it, that whoever has the ball gets out of bounds and tries to save that time on the clock. So we'll see what happens. They may, you may see them throw that little six-yard hitch route, get them out of bounds, or they may run to the short side of the field, try to get some yards and get out of bounds with one of their running backs. They pitch the ball to Thompson. He keeps it up the middle. And he's down to the 26-yard line. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Oklahoma State has to run back to the line of scrimmage with the clock ticking. Under five seconds to go. Jones throws the ball into the ground to stop the clock. With two seconds to go. I don't, I don't understand that. No, I don't understand that either. I don't understand why you don't run to the short side of the field, get your running back the opportunity to get in shoulder square, get up the, the field, gain about four or five yards. They ran to the wide side of the field. He cut back up into the middle. They wasted 15 seconds on the I'll clock when if you do run it out of bounds, you may waste about six or seven. So uh, I'm, I don't understand why they did that. Uh, between burning the timeout when they didn't need to and, and that play right there, Oklahoma State fans now hoping that that doesn't cost them at the end of the game. Well, you notice Kerry Hicks after that play was over, he was smart. He kind of spent a little bit of time on Oklahoma, side, Oklahoma State side of the ball and walked over there a little slow to waste a little bit more time. It, you know, Oklahoma State had a hard time getting their offense set. They wasted 15 seconds, and they're kicking a field goal that's much longer than they would have. And now the Buffs have called a timeout to freeze the kicker, Lawson Vaughn. Although, I don't know if you can freeze this kid. He's a senior, and he's been starting since he's a freshman here at Stillwater. Let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh might be able to hash things out for us a little more. Mark? Thanks, guys. I think what Oklahoma State coach Bob Simmons was thinking was that Let's try to get the ball in the middle of the field. So they had Thompson. They probably told David Thompson on the sideline, we're going to pitch it to you, but make sure you cut it up field so you get the ball right in the middle of the field, thus giving Lawson Vaughn a nice straight-ahead shot at this field goal. Had they run to the short side of the field, it would have been on the left hash mark and would have given him a little tougher angle at it. So I think they wanted to get the ball in the middle of the field to give Lawson Vaughn the best shot possible to make this field goal. I still think with 15 seconds left or 17 seconds left, you have got to try to get up the field and out of bounds. It's almost like a two-minute drill when the game's on the line. You tell your guys, get out of bounds, do whatever it takes to get out of bounds so we give ourselves the best opportunity with the clock. It's just clock management. Well, you both make pretty good points. Whatever the thinking, Lawson Vaughn on for a 44-yard field goal attempt. Into the wind, but he's got plenty on it. And it is right down the middle. The halftime gun goes off, and Oklahoma State runs into the locker room with a little momentum, and a 17-17 tie against the 10th-ranked team in the nation. Team in the nation. Half were all tied up. Each ball club with two touchdowns and a field goal in that first half, and Jeff Campbell, let's take a look at some of those scoring plays. Together. You see uh, Thompson going over the left side here, does a good job getting up the sideline. You see his speed, and he gets into the end zone. That was part of a really long drive that o Oklahoma State put together. See CU's first touchdown here. Kessler's going to do a little play-action fake over the right side. He's going to hit Lepsis coming across the middle. This is the block that Phil Savoy throws that is so good. You see the strength of Lepsis here, taking on a blocker, not going out of bounds. Savoy will come into your picture right there, makes a great block, gives Lepsis the opportunity to get down the field and get in the end zone for CU's first scoring drive. See, your second touchdown comes from Lyndon Henry. You see him going over the right side. Does a good job cutting back, reading his blocking. Gets his shoulder square, gets up the field and into the end zone. See you up 14 to 7 at that point. OSU comes right back. They put it. They had a couple of big plays. QB sneak is a pretty high percentage play down on the foot yard line. So he gets in right there behind the center, and the offensive line does a good job getting the push in there. And you're going to see some reaction after the field goal that tied the score at halftime. 17-17. Obviously, Oklahoma is pretty excited. Uh, Oklahoma State actually pretty excited going into the locker room. So the momentum really has switched to Oklahoma State's side so far right now. Offensive star of the day so far. It's Oklahoma State's David Thompson with 104 yards rushing. And you see second line from the top. OSU is out rushing the Bucks on the day. Total yards is in CU's favor, however. But the scoreboard says we're all tied up at 17, and Oklahoma State getting ready to kick it off. 
Back to receive for the Bucks. Lendon Henry and Herschel Trump. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready for number two. Lofton Field seats about 50,000. We've got about 30,000 in the stands today. Things cooling off somewhat in the second half. Lawson Vaughn, a line drive kick taken by Herschel Stroutman at his own five. He'll go to the opposite side of the field. And a return of about 20 yards up to his own 25-yard line. If you remember, Troutman went out a little bit earlier in the first half, having the wind knocked out of him, but he seems to be a little healthy right now coming back in and playing again. John Hessler so far on the day he's 8 for 13 for 124 yards one touchdown and he's been able to keep the ball out of the opposition's hands something he's had some problems with over the last few weeks he threw two picks against Nebraska last week and they led to 10 points for the Huskers this is Troutman picks his way up to the 29 yard line gain of about 4 Josh Green the linebacker makes the step he was lucky that Troutman just had the wind knocked out of him. It wasn't something serious. And throughout the season, 583 yards on the ground so far for Troutman. Lendon Henry is actually leading the Bucks in rushing today with 83 yards. But Troutman is out to start the second half for the Bucks, And he gets it on second and five. Has the first down and a bit more up to his own 39. Jeroy Johnson the stop. See Herschel running over the left side of the line here. See you does such a good job on their line. You know, they're going to dominate you up front. They're really big. They do a good job. Herschel does a good job getting outside, breaking a tackle, getting the first down. You know, that's, that's a big play for CU. Those are the kind of plays that keep your drive going. Hessler on first down. Gives it off to Troutman. He's hit quickly at the line of scrimmage and thrown for a yard loss by Lorenzo Green. And a flag comes flying into the pile. Let's go down to the field. Let's not go down to the field. Thought we were going to get something from Mark McIntosh. We'll go down to Mark in just a few seconds. We might get a little bit better angle here of what actually happened. It was a face mask penalty on Oklahoma State. You see Herschel Troutman going over the left side of Oklahoma State's defense, and you'll see the face mask right there. Well, that's, that's a tough call. He really didn't grab the face mask. He kind of got his hand up there, but uh, I don't think he really grabbed it. Bob Simmons waiting to find out the bad news. And this is a five-yard penalty on Oklahoma State, so the ball is up to the 44-yard line of CU. Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell with you, just starting the second half in Stillwater. We're all tied up, 17-17. Oklahoma State player playing inspired football this afternoon. Drops it on the swing pass. He is across midfield, gets the first down, and down to the Oklahoma State 46-yard line. And now let's go down to Mark McIntosh on the field. Thank you, Leslie. You talked about Oklahoma State playing inspired football. We're kind of getting the gist of uh, CU coach Rick Neuheisel's halftime speech, and he frankly chewed some butt in the locker room saying the Bucks were playing uninspired football, and he challenged each and every kid in there to start playing like a top-10 team instead of playing like a team that doesn't look like it wants to be out here. Back up to you guys. Well, the Buffs have not lost to an unranked Big 8 team since 1985. Herschel Troutman might have gotten a yard on that. Since 1985, CU is 47, 0, and 2, playing against unranked Big 8 teams. Well, Max right. You know, the, he's talking about see you not playing inspired football right now they're not playing inspired football they're not excited about plays you know you need to be excited about plays even if it's only five yards your your offensive linemen near the people that aren't carrying the ball ought to be digging the guy that has the ball out of the pile and patting him on the butt and saying good job so you can get your your whole team as a team again on second and ten that's going deep he's got the boy 
in and out of the hands of Phil Savoy. R.W. McWhorters came up at the last second, maybe to get a hand up. For a freshman, R.W. McWhorters is very, very impressive. He can do everything. He can play offense. He can play defense. You know, he makes good plays. He makes smart plays. And for a young player, uh, you know, that's, that's very rare. There may have been a little bit of contact before that ball got in there, but, uh, you know, you got to give some credit to R.W. McWhorters. He closed on a pass that was well thrown and, uh, and, and made a good play. You know, speaking of deep passes, Hessler fooled everybody last week against Nebraska going deep to James Kidd for the touchdown. Yeah, you know, they, they are a very, very strong group of receivers, and Hessler's done a great job all year hitting his receivers for big plays. He actually changed the play at the line of scrimmage. That wasn't what was called. Well, he's smart, and that's what Rick likes about him. He's smart. He has the opportunity to do those kind of things. He, he thinks the way Rick likes him to think, and, and he does those, those the good things for a quarterback. That time, Hessler does get it to Savoy, and the Buffs are down to the Oklahoma State 31-yard line. You see Savoy. Savoy's 6'3". He's a good-sized receiver. He's going to do a lot of things for you. He can catch some fade routes, and he can go across the middle. He's a big target. You'll see him getting in here. He finds the zone. Hessler puts, puts the ball right on the money, and he catches it. Hessler probably wants that ball up a little bit. Hessler deep over the middle again. Almost intercepted. The pass intended Hessler's pass. for Chris Anderson. Jeroy Johnson was there to break it up. Jeroy Johnson actually broke up this interception. He makes a good play on the ball. You'll see him come into your picture right now. Gets his hand up there, knocks the ball away from Chris Anderson. And Second if he doesn't ten. hit the other Oklahoma State defensive back right there, it's picked off. You see a little bit different angle of that here. And, that, you know, if he doesn't get Courtney uh, Grenier does a good job staying in position to pick that ball up. Unfortunately for Oklahoma State, they ran into each other. Brings up second and ten. This time the Bucks stay on the ground. It's Troutman. And he is down to the five-yard line. On the carry, down to the Cowboys' five. A gain of 26 yards. You talk about Troutman and how talented he is and how talented the rest of the, the running backs for CU are. He gets knocked out of the game with, with a little... Uh, Loses his win early. He comes back in the game, makes a great cut up the middle off the right side of CU's offensive line. And uh, Trent Fisher and, and uh, Courtney Grenier do a good job making the tackle. But Herschel Troutman at 5'6", 190 pounds, is very, very powerful for his size. It's first and goal for the Buffs. We're all tied up at 17. A chance for the Buffs to go back ahead. This is Troutman. Somebody missed the block. Troutman throw for a one-yard loss. Courtney Garner gets in there to make the stop along with Jeroy Johnson. Oklahoma State defense is playing with a lot of emotion. They're swarming around the ball. Jeroy Johnson does a good job containing this play. Uh, we, we missed the block. Miller missed the block up front. Didn't get enough on the guy, so uh, Troutman can get back outside. You'll see a little bit better angle of that here. Troutman has to make a decision, and there's two Oklahoma State guys right in his face. He didn't have anywhere to go. Second and goal from the seven. Let's call that last play a loss of two. And this is Trotman again. He gets one of those yards back, but that's it. That'll bring up third and goal from the six. This is why the red area is so important. You've got to be, you cannot make mistakes. You cannot make blocking errors down in the red area because this is where you score your points. You'll see him come off the right side. Basically, it's the same play to the opposite side that they ran last time. Uh, Jay Grosfield does a good job uh, graphing up Herschel Troutman for, you know, a short gain, and, and that's where you can't make mistakes. You cannot have blocking errors down in the red area. Again, third and goal from the sixth. Three wide receivers in the game for CU. Hessler, touchdown to James Kidd. Hessler's pass complete to number two, James Kidd. Touchdown, Colorado. That's just a great throw by Hessler. Great route outside by James Kidd. They're going to run slant routes on the outside. They're going to come in. You'll see him slide in there behind the defense, and Hessler puts that ball right on the money. That's a great throw and a great catch. That's well executed by CU. Kidd simply beats his man, gives him the fake to the outside, comes inside wide open in the end zone. And that is James' third touchdown catch of the season. Oscar Ritchie and I to put another point on the board. Pick it up, and good. It's good. So CU, with four and a half minutes gone in the third quarter, retakes the lead, 24-17. Hey, 
Patience is a virtue. But why wait? Right now is a great time to get your best deal on a new Nissan. Life has its ups and downs. Actually, there's nothing down when you finance a 96 Ultima GXE with alloy wheels and you make no payments until 1996. Or lease a 96 Maxima GXE with alloy wheels for just $2.99 a month for 36 months with $2,000 down. Rock and roll will live forever. But these deals won't, so get a great deal today. Why wait? I trained my boy McNeil to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champ, and he did for 89 seconds. He didn't back down from any combinations thrown at him, and he ain't backing down from this one. There's a new stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Not just cheese, but pepperoni baked right into the crust. So good you'll eat it backwards. Show him, kid. The new one-two combination cheese and pepperoni stuffed crust pizza. Hey, McNeely, how many slices am I holding? Tuesday on UPN, Deadly Games takes the low road and Live Shot takes the high road. First, Christopher Lloyd is Jackal, a video game villain come to life, and he's bringing the ultimate weapon with him. Deadly Games, then it's a very special Live Shot. Anchor woman Sherry Beck faces a crisis that could kill her. They're gonna operate tomorrow. To survive, she must make the ultimate leap of faith. Live Shot. Tuesday night, starting at 7 on UPN 20. Wind picking up just a bit here in Stillwater. We were told the storm front was moving in. Hopefully it'll move in well after our plane takes <laughs> off. That would be nice. Stillwater, yeah. In the meantime, CU taking off. A 24-17 lead and kicking off to Oklahoma State. Jason Leslie with the wind behind him. R.W. McWhorters chooses to put the wind down. Let's take another look at that last touchdown for CU. He made a couple of mistakes on a running plays, but good teams and great teams, the difference between the two, are great teams take care of their mistake and they come out and make a big play. CU comes out and they make a big play. They get it in the end zone, and I'm sure Rick is excited about that, but he's not too excited about the two plays that happened previous to those. James Kidd leading the scoring drive that goes 10 plays and 75 yards. The thing about James Kidd that just blows my mind is is how small he is. He's listed at 5'8", 160. I'll bet she's not 5'7". No, he's, he is, he's probably 5'6", but he can fly. He's one of those guys that can, once he gets open, he, he can do a lot of damage. Pass complete from Tony Jones to Willie Grissom. And let's go down to the field to Mark McIntyre. Thanks, guys. You're talking about Coach Rick Neuheisel. And uh, coming off the field after John Hester was throwing that touchdown pass to James Kidd, Rick Neuheisel was ecstatic. He ran out on the field and, and tapped John Hessler on the helmet saying, that was awesome. And he was talking about the read that John Hessler made to get the ball to James Kidd. That's been one of the things that, that Neuheisel has been working with Hessler is find the guy that is open. Take what the defense gives you. And he certainly did it on that play, getting it to James Kidd for the touchdown. Back up to you guys. Now, by the way, that was the 20th touchdown pass for the season for the bus which means they're just two away from the school record up the middle goes the freshman fullback Brian Aiken on the great yard and he gets the first down for Oklahoma State Rick's a great, one of the reasons Rick is such a good coach is he'll stick with his players. He's never going to give up on a player. He's going to stick with him. He's going to teach him. He's going to teach him what he knows. And he's been working with John Hessler. And, and if you've noticed today, John's been a lot more patient in the pocket. He's been going through his reads. He's been looking for the open man, and he's been successful throwing the ball today. Oklahoma State at its own 32-yard line. It's to Thompson. He's got room around left end. Finally knocked out of bounds in CU territory at the 49. Steve Rosga gave him a push. A 19-yard gain for David Thompson. Thompson's the type running back that he can pretty much do anything for you. You see him stop and change directions there. And two steps into his change of directions, he's going full speed. He can get to the outside and turn it up the field and, and, uh, and get some more yardage for you. So that's why he's such a vital po uh, part of Oklahoma State's offense, is he has a lot of weapons. He can do a lot of different things for you. Uh, best weapon today, David Thompson, 121 yards so far. First down for OSU at the CU 49-yard line. This is Thompson again, another big hole. He is flipped up and over down to the CU 45-yard line. 
He picked up four yards, but he's a little dizzy afterwards. You can see him coming off the right side of uh, OSU's offensive line. He's going to pick his hole. He's going to explode through the hole, and Marcus Washington hits him in the knees and flips him over. Kind of wondering where he is probably for a little while there. Earlier today, we found out CU's left tackle, Kyle Smith, had to leave the game with a broken bone in his foot. Now we get word Oklahoma State's Jack Nichols broke his left leg in the first half on a kickoff return. They had to wheel him off, so a couple of broken bones today. It has not been a good day in the training room for either team. This is Thompson again, finally dragged down by Rosga at the 40-yard line. I believe he's about a half yard short of the first down. Thompson is, is such a good running back. I know I've said that a lot today, but you'll see if why plays work a lot of times are because running backs make good reads. They, they do what they have to do. That's why they're here on scholarship. They can do those type things. He gets into the middle, can't really get anything, bounces back outside for a six-yard gain, and uh, that, that, that's really a good run by Thompson. 130 yards on the day, averaging over seven yards a carry. And right now it's third and a very short one for the Cowboys. And they have the first down. On the carry was Jeff Grenier, his first of the afternoon. They'll move the chains again. Oklahoma State coming back out. They're putting some plays together. You know, David Thompson's done a good job running the ball to the left side and to the right side. They've been putting a long drive together. You know, this is what the, this is the kind of drive that CU needs to be able to stop if they're going to win this game today. And they haven't done a very good job stopping it so far today. Oklahoma State has done a good job sustaining drives. And right now, they're down to the CU 38-yard line. Tony Jones looking for his pay dirt. He's got his man McQuarters touchdown OSU. R.W. McQuarters is just, you know, he's a great athlete. We've talked about him a lot today. Tony Jones, little pump make, little stutter action on the outside. You see R.W. McCorders using his feet. He does a good job of leaving himself some room to the right so uh, Tony Jones has the opportunity to put that ball in there for him and, and make it in for a big score. Well, if we sound a little surprised that Oklahoma State is able to score through the air, it's because we are. We are. Coming into this game, they only have four touchdown passes all year long. They are by far the worst growing team in the Big 8 Conference, but they burn CU right there. Like you said, Oklahoma State is, is the last team in the Big 8 in passing. They, they, they mainly are a rushing team, but they put so many runs in there together and then put the big pass and the exclamation point on touchdown. And Lawson Vaughn ties it up with eight minutes left in the third. Can I help you? Yeah, of course, like, please. Jeep and Eagle dealer. Back in Stillwater, Oklahoma. 
The Cowboys have just tied it up against Colorado once again. 24-24 with eight minutes to go in the third. And Oklahoma State kicking off. Lyndon Henry boots the ball. At the 20-yard line. But the officials say, see you fell on it. So the Buffs will retain possession. We're going to have another look at the touchdown. You see him take a little hit and pump fake, which gives the, the cornerback a kind of a, a, a gray read on what's really going to happen. And R.W. McCorder does a good job getting past D.J. Cunningham and getting Oklahoma State a touchdown. You know, Jeff, this has been a problem for the Buffaloes all year long. They came out flat against Kansas, and it cost them. The Jayhawks beat them. They came out flat against Iowa State. It almost cost them. They were able to take off and win the game in the fourth quarter. And now it's costing them again today playing uninspired football. Well, the thing that I think that they need to realize is that no matter who you play, football is a very, very emotional game. It's based on emotions. It's, it's, a, it's a game that can swing because one team is more emotional than the other. Now, they haven't come out with a lot of emotion today. And they didn't come out with a lot of emotion against Kansas, and it cost them. So hopefully they can get that back today. Tennyson McCarty on the reception picks up 16 yards on this play. Spencer goes back, does a good job. Tennyson McCarty using his strength, gets hit, breaks the tackle, gets up the field. Good play by CU. They're going back to a little bit shorter passing attack, I think, in the second half. It's Tennyson's second catch of the afternoon, the younger brother of Eric McCarty, a former CU uh, player back in the 80s. First down for the bus. Landon Henry. His second effort earns him another few yards, and he's up to the 40. Javon Langford and Trent Fisher the stop. Landon's really had a big day all day. He's broken a couple of big runs, and he's been running really really well between the tackles. He's going, doing a good job getting up in the middle and getting positive yards in the CU. Seven for the Bucks. Hessler fumbles. A great job knocking the ball out of his hands by the outside linebacker, Lewis Adams. Lewis Adams does a good job getting penetration into CU's backfield. You'll see him come into your screen here in a minute. Little play fake by Hessler. He's got the ball. He's trying to find his receiver, and there's just a good second effort there by Lewis Adams to get that ball out of Hessler's hands, and luckily for CU, Hessler fell back on him. Hey, you're right about that second effort. Watch, Lennon Henry does get a body on him, and he's going down, but still the arm is long enough to knock the ball out of Hessler's possession. Fortunately for Hessler, he fell back on it. Now the Buffs are facing third and 15. Over the middle. It's a play that's worked recently, but James Kidd can't hold on. And CU will have to punt the ball away. Hessler actually threw a, 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 an okay pass. Didn't throw a great pass, but I think James Kidd should have hung on to that ball. He came wide open in the middle, uh, got about 17 yards. It would have been enough for a first down. It just didn't happen. Andy Mitchell averaging almost 41 yards a punt this year. Hasn't had much work today. Andre Richardson back to receive it. Mitchell gets off a pretty good one. High and deep and a fair catch called for it. And Oklahoma State will start with the ball at its own 34. Well, the Oklahoma State fans haven't had a lot to cheer about the last few years. But they're getting into it today. I'll tell you, this is a this is an amazing game right now. The third quarter was just just under six minutes left to play in the game. The score tied 24-24. I think that that uh, or third quarter it's it, uh, this is a game that I would have figured CU would have done a good job in and taken it to them the first half, and it'd be kind of a catch-up game for Oklahoma State the rest of the game. But Oklahoma State has really you know done a good job on the offense and defensive line of scrimmage and, and hasn't made a lot of mistakes. And I think that that's why it's a close game right now. First down at their own 34. We're all tied up at 24. What a great play by Kerry Hicks. Gets in almost as soon as Tony Jones took that snap. Give him credit for a sack. 
Barry Hicks is a tough player. He's an All-American candidate early in the year. He's played really well all year long. He just does a great job beating their center, Brian Hope, to the ball. You'll see a good look of it right here. He comes right inside, shoots the gap, and does a good job tackling the Oklahoma State running back for a loss. Second and 13. This is the game to Thompson. We talked earlier in the day about the patience that Thompson has, letting things develop. You know, he, he'll, he'll slow up a little bit after he gets the ball, and all of a sudden a hole open, and he'll be right through it. You'll see it here. Little draw action. He'll come up in the line, kind of find out where he's going, and explode through the, through the hole. Great leg drive. You know, he does a good job getting up there for a gain of about five yards. You see a little bit different angle of it here. Him pulling CU defenders with him. He is really a tough running back. He's probably one of the best running backs in the Big Eight, not at, you know, maybe even in the country. Third and six for the Cowboys. They get to Thompson again. He is well short of the first down in Oklahoma State. We have a You know, Thompson's rushed for over 100 yards against teams like Tennessee, Nebraska, Kansas State, who really all have solid defenses. So that's the type of running back that Thompson is. He, Thompson is. He does a great job running the ball, and that's why Oklahoma State is successful today because he's been so good. Well, the defense is starting to step it up here. I don't remember any time during the first half where the teams had to punt on consecutive possessions. This is Greg Ivey punting to Steve Rosga. And Ivey gets off a good one. Rosga immediately calls fair catch because he's got a couple of orange jerseys standing directly in front of him. We'll see you with the ball at its own 19. We're still all tied up at 24, and we'll come right back. I trained my boy McNeely to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champ, and he did for 89 seconds. He didn't back down from any combinations thrown at him, and he ain't backing down from this one. There's a new stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Not just cheese, but pepperoni baked right into the crust. So good you'll eat it backwards. Show him, kid. The new one-two combination cheese and pepperoni stuffed crust pizza. Hey, McNeely, how many slices am I holding? There are a lot of compelling reasons for buying a Dodge Ram. A potent line of Magnum engines. The most available towing of any pickup. Payload capacity of up to two and a half tons. But perhaps the weightiest argument is this. Dodge Ram has higher resale than Ford, Chevy, or GMC. The rules have indeed changed. Between coaching, broadcasting, and family, there's not a lot of time for anything else. That's why I like First Bank. They're locally owned with over 60 locations right here in Colorado. You can call First Bank anytime, 24 hours a day. And the best deal of all is free checking. That means no minimum balance, no monthly service charges, and no annual fee in an ATM card, all for a full year. First Bank. Check them out. First down for the Buffs. The end around again. James Kidd, but it doesn't fool Oklahoma State. Kidd tripped up out of bounds by Jeroy Johnson. Tell you what, it could have been a lot worse if it weren't for James Kidd's great speed. That is sheer speed by James Kidd because Oklahoma State did a good job. The, the outside backer stayed at home, was in contained. James Kidd just used his speed. You see a good angle of it here. You see him taking the reverse. Oklahoma State does a good job penetrating into the backfield. Javon Langford, and you see the speed that James Kidd has getting up the field and actually making a gain out of something that could have been a big-time loss. Instead, it's second and four for the Buffs. They're at their own 26. Harlan Barnes tries the left side, but he's short of the first down. It looks kind of frustrated to me. They don't look like they're in sync. They need to look like they need to just kind of relax, take a breath of air, and get going again. Get back into a rhythm, fix the run in the pass, and get themselves into a position where they can score. Well, this will make a lot of people in Stillwater happy. 
the University of Oklahoma lost today. Not just lost, got creamed by Kansas State, 49 to 10. Hessler keeps on third and one, and he has the first down. One thing about Kansas State is they can throw the ball, and they can throw the ball very, very well. They've got a lot of good receivers, and they've got a great quarterback. And they can keep you from running the ball. That's one of the best rushing defenses in the country. CU has yet to play Kansas State. That will be the season finale, and it will be in Manhattan, Kansas. And that's going to be an important. The last three games for CU are very, very important because if they win the last three games, they can go to a big-time bowl. If they lose one of those games, it can change the whole outlook of their bowl situation. On first down, that's where the play action. There's good pressure on him. Almost picked off by R.W. McCorders, and a flag comes down. You hear the booing because everybody here thinks they're going to call, uh, call defensive interference. Well, I think it was a great play by R.W. McCordy. You see a little play action pass by Hessler. He's going to throw a little post route to the outside to see his receiver. And you'll see R.W. McCorder come into your picture right there. And it did look like he got there a little bit early. Here's a different look at it. You may get a better look at see. Yeah, he did. He got there a little bit early. That's a good call by the ref. You know, many times he'll get that call in his favor because he was going for the ball. But that time he went for the ball through the wide receiver and you can't do that right it, it's a situation where he kind of is in a position where he's got to go over that way you hope you can get your arm on it as a db but unfortunately for oklahoma state rw mcquarters he hit the receiver before the ball got there that's an automatic first down for the buffs they're at their own 46 and this time hester is complete to savoy and he is at midfield let's go down to the field to mark mcintosh Thank you, Les. You saw Bill Savoy make that catch. Another one of the wide receivers who's usually in the mix for the Buffs is out for the rest of the game. Sophomore Chris Anderson uh, initially thought it was just a dislocated left pinky, but we found out as a compound fracture, they had to take him into the locker room and sew it up, and Chris Anderson is gone for the rest of the day. My goodness, broken bones littering the field today. There are three players out now because of fractures. Two for CU and one for Oklahoma State. On second and six, this is Barnes. Bounces off one tackler, but the second one gets him. Oh, the pickup of three. Alamo Bailey and Lewis Adams, the two linebackers converging. Oklahoma State's defense is doing a good job flowing to the football and being aggressive on the tackle. You see Marlon Barnes take a handoff over the left side. Doesn't have anything up the middle, so he just keeps pushing, keeps fighting, but Oklahoma State players are flying all over the place making tackles. That's a good, good, aggressive defense. There's Marlon Barnes out of Memphis, Tennessee. Marlon has a couple of brothers named Melvin and Martin who run track at Memphis State. On third and three, it's complete. And a first down. Matt Lepsis, the tight end, makes the catch. Josh Green, the linebacker, makes the tackle. Great concentration by Matt Lepsis. It was kind of a low throw. He reached down there and got the ball and got whatever it took to get that third down. Third down conversions at the end of the game are what you look at because that can determine how well you played on offense during the day. The clock winding down at the end of the third quarter, under 50 seconds to go. We're all tied up at 24. CU on a drive in OSU territory. Swing pass to Barnes. Good blocking ahead of him. And Marlin gets it inside the 40, down to the OSU 38. Alamu Bailey to stop. You talked about the trio of running backs at CU all day long. You'll see Barnes take a little swing pass from the quarterback. The key to this play is those big guys up front, the offensive linemen who get the block so he can get positive yardage and, and good, get a pretty good gain of about four yards out of it. Chris Maioli doing a great job out there blocking for Marlon Barnes. Five seconds to go, third quarter. Clock still ticking. And it looks like CU will be content to let it wind down and finish up the third quarter. So we go into the final frame, all tied up. Tenth ranked CU and unranked Oklahoma State. Come to Rick and Ball Cadillac, the sale headquarters for North Star, today's most technically advanced engine and suspension system, which now powers the 96 sedan DeVille, Eldorado, and Seville. Enjoy low introductory North Star smart lease payments on DeVille, 
or the $8,500 North Star discount on Rickenbaugh's limited edition Colorado Seville's and Eldorado's. Simply put, the North Star is on sale at Rickenbaugh, the Cadillac of dealerships. Rickenbaugh Cadillac, centrally located at Spear and Broadway. Looking for a paint store that covers everything? Get hip to the square. Builder Square is your prime source for paint. Starting with Glidden and Dutch Boy brands. With free computer color matching to any shade. Plus specialty brands, stains, and every painting accessory imaginable. There's even advice to make things go smoothly. All at great square deal prices. Builder Square. We'll get you squared away. Hi, I'm Sean of Colorado Sewer Service. For over a decade, our family has been dedicated to keeping households running smoothly 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, at no extra charge. So when your drains won't go down, call the best name in town. That's Colorado Sewer Service at 424-0448. Today's game is brought to you by Blackjack Pizza, by Hank Mardor, and by Samsonite. And we have us a ball game in Stillwater, Oklahoma. We're going into the fourth quarter. CU and Oklahoma State all tied up at 24. CU with the ball down at the Oklahoma State 38-yard line. Hessler, the option. He keeps, has a first down, and gets down to the Cowboys' 25-yard line. Trent Fisher, the stop. One of the things that Hessler can do very, very well is he can run the option. He's, you know, he's got really good speed for a quarterback. He comes down the line of scrimmage. The pitch man's taken away, so he ducks back up underneath the blocking. Does a good job getting up the field. But for a quarterback, Hessler really has good speed. Sophomore out of Brighton, trying to lead CU into the end zone once again and retake the lead. Marlon Barnes, no further than the 24, because right there to meet him was number 90, Norman Williams, and number 32, Alan Bailey. You know, you, you talk to your running backs every year about keeping your pad level down. You'll see Alamu Bailey come in here and get his pad level underneath Marlon Barnes. That's a great textbook tackle there by Alamu Bailey. And Marlon Barnes does a good job just kind of staying up after he gets hit. Yeah, you can say uh, Marlon will remember the Alamu. <laughs> Second and nine for the Bucks. The swing pass again to Barnes. This time he gets it inside the 20, down to the 19, call it a gain of six. R.W. McWhorter is one of the first to meet him there. She has thrown that swing pass a couple of times today, and they've been very, very successful with it. This play is successful because it's a good pass by Hessler. There's good blocking up front. Melvin Thomas does a good job blocking his man, and then Marlon Barnes gets himself up the field and gets a good game for CU. Hessler over the middle complete, a nice catch by Ray Perut. And down at the six-yard line. Courtney Garner makes the stop. That's been their most effective pass play today, Jeff. Over the middle, 10, 15 yards. Ray Caruth does a good job. He comes off the line of scrimmage hard. He gets his defensive back to turn. He comes up underneath his defensive back. You'll see Hessler being very, very patient in the pocket here. Caruth does a good job catching the ball in his hands, going up to get it with concentration. And Caruth's the kind of guy that doesn't want to go down. He wants to get in the end zone and make a big play. First and goal from the five. The option. Hester keeps it again, but he's offended by Trent Fisher for a loss of one. Trent Fisher does a good job supporting the option. Free safeties are usually the guys that can support the option. They can take away the quarterback or the pitch man. So you'll see him coming up, 
top of your screen. He'll come in and take Hessler out of the play. They did a good job taking the pitch man out of it, and then Trent Fisher did a good job taking Hessler out of it. Is the free safety, Trent Fisher, the one who is assigned to the quarterback on the option play? That's a, it's, a, it's a defensive call by the defensive coordinator. A lot of times, yes, that will be the guy that they put on the quarterback. They usually put a, a corner or an outside linebacker on a pitch man. Time out on the field. Referee Hal Dowden calls the break in the action. Trent Fisher uh, upset about something. I think actually he might have gotten hurt on that last play, making the tackle, so they're going to replace him. And I think he's angry because he didn't want to come out. Yeah, they are making him leave the game because he's injured. That's an NCAA rule. He has to sit out at least one play. And then he can come back in and continue. But yeah, that is a rule the NCAA did put in. And that's a good rule because if a guy is out there and he's a little woozy from his back and he gets hit, hit again, you don't want to get injured because of it. Second and goal from the six. Troutman up the middle. Picks up only a yard. So it'll bring up third and goal from the five. Great defensive play here by Oklahoma State. Lewis Adams and Jamal Williams do a good job getting penetration back into CU's backfield. Actually, uh, Alamu Bailey does a good job stuffing that run up in there and CU's getting a gain of very little or, or nothing. Third down and goal from the Cowboys five. Third and goal from the five. Hessler with time. Lost it. Savoy, what a catch. Touchdown, CU. Bill Savoy, only a sophomore. This kid's got two years left in his career to get better than he already is right now. He's really doing a good job. He's a lot like Michael Westbrook. He's very, very strong, and he can do a lot for an offense like CU. You see him making a diving catch in the end zone for a very, very big play for CU. See Hessler again, very patient in the pocket, and good separation by Phil Savoy and great concentration. You know, the best game of his career came last year as a freshman. He was subbing for an injured Michael Westbrook. And Savoy caught six passes for 113 yards and a touchdown against Oklahoma State. Bosco Ritchie gets the extra point. And once again, CU up by a touchdown. We'll take a break in the fourth quarter. Always fixing up something special from the grill, like our Caribbean chicken salad with grilled marinated chicken and grilled tuna salad with ranch dressing and spicy pico de gallo. So if you like your salads fresh from the farm and hot off the grill, Chili's grills like no place else. Boy, I love this Denver Post. You got the post without consulting me. Yeah, I got six months free. Yeah, but I'm the man. Well, ma'am, you need Empire Magazine on Sunday. Western people, Western food, Western getaways, and Friday's bigger weekend is more fun than ever, plus six months free. That totally undermines my hunter-gatherer role. What? You want to spear it off the porch tomorrow? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Spear good. Mm -hmm. Buy six months of the post, get six free, plus 6 a.m. delivery. Call 832-3232. Les Shapiro and Jeff Campbell with you. Early in the fourth quarter, CU just took the lead once again. The Buffs leading Oklahoma State, 31-24. Jason Leslie getting ready to kick it off. And the wind has shifted directions a bit here. Leslie kicking with the wind behind him now. McCorders in the end zone, downs the ball. This is, you'll see Savoy here. Savoy's had a really good game today. He's had five receptions for 38 yards and a touchdown. And, you know, this is a little bit better angle for you. See Hester again throwing this ball, and Savoy doing a great job laying out, 
catching that ball and bringing it into his chest, actually kind of using his arms to cradle that ball in the end zone, and that's just a great catch. Great concentration by Phil Malloy. And let's not discount the pass that John Hessler threw. They put a nice touch on that. Hessler, Hessler's got incredible touch. For a young quarterback, he's doing a great job, and he's had a great year. He really has. First down for Oklahoma State. They're down by a touchdown. They're at their own 20-yard line. Tony Jones, under pressure, gets the pass off to his tight end, Alonzo Mays. That's a 20-yard pickup. You've got to be able to shut down those kind of big plays right now. You'll see Alonzo Mays drag him from the backside. He tries to find the zone in there between the backers and just find a little opening so he can, so uh, Tony Jones can get the ball to him, and that's exactly what he does. Good play by Oklahoma State. Alonzo Mays, big kid, 6'6", 252. That's NFL size. And he's a sophomore, so he's got a lot of time to develop, too. This Oklahoma State team will not lay down. Another first down at their own 40. David Thompson hit very quickly by Ryan Olsen, a CU defensive lineman. They're going to go over the left side. Here's Oklahoma State's going to go to the left side to see Thompson get the ball. And Ryan Olsen just does a good job beating his man and getting into the backfield to make a big play. Olsen out of Lakewood, Colorado, a civil engineering student. Good guitar player, too. Second and 12. Tony Jones wants to throw. Great play by Matt Russell getting the hand up. Because Tony Jones had that tight end, Alonzo Mays, wide open again. But Russell, with the vertical leap, Knocks it down. Russell does a great job here. You'll see him getting in position. He drops back into his curl zone. He does a good job. Then he jumps up in the air and knocks this ball away and prevent a pass because Mays is wide open. That would be a big gain for Oklahoma State. Now we're going to have to listen to Matt tell us about his jumping ability for the next week, aren't we? Yeah. First, we have to talk to him about the tank top that he had on with about 20-degree weather when we got off the airplane last night. <laughs> Third and 12 for Oklahoma State. They're at their own 38. Jones again throwing on the run. A very nice catch by Willie Grissom. There is a penalty flag down. And it's back behind the original line of scrimmage. call against Oklahoma State, so wipe that last pass play off the board. That ball will come back. I'm impressed with the way Tony Jones throws the football. I, I know that he doesn't throw the ball very much, and Oklahoma State isn't a prolific passing team, but when he does throw it, he seems to throw it really well. Yeah, just to give you an idea of how Tony Jones has struggled under Bob Simmons, this year, he's thrown nine interceptions and just three touchdown passes. However, today... He's doing a good job. He's 9 of 15 for 109 yards. And that's good because they're mixing the run and the pass. They're running the ball a lot more than they're passing it, obviously, but they do have that threat to pass it. You know, just like when he hit R.W. McCorders for the touchdown down the sideline. Let's also keep in mind he has nothing but freshman wide receivers out there outside of the one junior, Ken Walk. I think we're going to get a face mask on Matt Russell on this play. He was the first man to meet the running back who caught the pass, Andre Richardson, and it looked like Matt jerked the helmet on Richardson. Matt actually had very, very good position on this play. You'll see him follow the little swing pass outside. Actually, it's a screen pass outside to the back. Matt has good position to make the tackle. He just unfortunately grabbed around the helmet. I don't think he actually got the face mask. He grabbed around the helmet of Oklahoma State, and they called the face mask. I didn't know that was illegal. I didn't think it was illegal either, but obviously they do today. I, I think initially he got his left hand on the face mask. The official happened to be right there as he did it, even though it was just for a split second. 
and therefore the face masking call. And, and sometimes, Jeff, it's understandable why we get so many face masking calls. When it's the closest thing to your reach and you need to bring the guy down, that's what you grab for instinctively. And it's tough not to grab it, but it's a rule that's trying to keep the players healthy and stay away from neck injuries. Oklahoma State facing third and 18. A good rush put on by Olsen. But Tony Jones gets away, and Matt Russell finally brings him down at the 36-yard line. Far, far short of the first down, however. Well, Tony Jones has great, great running ability. They get good pressure up front. CU does a good job with the push on the offensive line of Oklahoma State. And Matt Russell does a good job staying at home and being patient. You'll see a little bit better Tony Jones dropping back to pass. Great pressure up the middle. He gets up into the hole and starts running. You'll see Matt Russell be, do a good job being patient, making the tackle on Tony Jones who is a very good runner, but you have to give a lot of credit to Ryan Olsen for getting that penetration into Oklahoma State's backfield. Oklahoma State in punt formation. Greg Ivey punting to Steve Rosga. Ivey gets off another pretty good one. Rosga, fair catch at his own 22-yard line. We have 8.32 to go in the ballgame. See you with a lead of 31-24. to 24. We'll take a break. There are a lot of compelling reasons for buying a Dodge Ram. A potent line of Magnum engine. The most available towing of any pickup. Payload capacity of up to two and a half tons. But perhaps the weightiest argument is this. Dodge Ram has higher resale than Ford, Chevy, or GMC. The rules have indeed changed. take some things very seriously. All right, the blackjack's here. I wondered if you were going to make it. You know how serious I take my blackjack pizza. Blackjack pizza. This is serious pizza at a ridiculously low price. Get a large two-topping pizza for only $6.99. Call Colorado's own Blackjack Pizza. Is getting into your briefcase more of a job than your job? Old-fashioned briefcases have two positions, open and closed. Now there's a briefcase that can split the difference. Samsonite Smart Attaché. It opens all the way when laid flat, but a patented smart hinge tells it to open like a portfolio when upright. So you can get to your work without all the work. The Smart Attaché from Samsonite. Back in Stillwater, see you up by a touchdown and with the ball and going deep to Ray Caruth. This could be seven. It is. Ray Caruth gets in a 77-yard throw and catch. John Hessler to Ray Caruth. There is one thing about Ray Caruth. If he gets behind you as a DB, you will not catch him because he is very, very fast. That's why he averages what he averages. He's 429 in the 40. So you know, he's going he's gonna to run, and you'll see him get up here. He runs a great post route against R.W. McCorders, and he is a long way ahead of him. Once he gets to that ball, he is gone. You know, he, he's going to be a kid that will be up for an All-American honor uh, at the end of the year. He's just he's an amazing player. I'm sure the freshman McCorders is a little shocked. He hasn't seen that kind of speed in high school, and here he is as a true freshman playing against one of the better receivers in the nation. And Caruth just flew right past him. Voskaritschian gets the extra point. And, Jeff, this brings up a good point. CU up the lead now to 14 points. How important is it for CU to either maintain its number 10 ranking nationally or even move up in the polls by beating Oklahoma State by a goodly margin? I, I would assume that if everybody looked at this score and saw CU leading by just 7 or by 10 at the end of the game, they might not be able to move up. Well, one thing about that I think you have to take into consideration is CU for some reason, just doesn't play well at Oklahoma State. They've never played well when they come down here. But they need to win this game by a margin for two reasons. To stay where they are at number 10 in the polls and to get some confidence back after the loss against Nebraska, the loss to Kansas. They need some confidence back. But it is important that they win. And Oklahoma State really has done a good job today staying in the position that they're in. Yeah, no matter what the outcome, you're correct about that. Oklahoma State has nothing to be ashamed about. They played their hearts out for former CU assistant Bob Simmons. 
No, it's funny. A lot of people, in fact, a lot of people on that CU plane ride over here yesterday felt that Oklahoma State, despite not having as much talent as CU, would stay with the Buffs for at least a half to three quarters, and then talent would take over, and CU would run away in the fourth quarter, and that's exactly the way this game is going. Exactly. I mean, Oklahoma State has done a great job. They put impressive drives together all game long and this game is a long way from being over there two touchdowns down but you know they're in a position now where they can get two touchdowns they've played that well today but you're right oklahoma state has played well cu defensively hasn't really done a great job against the run i think that's the difference right now jason leslie the sidewinder kickoff this is mcquarters he is racked up for his own 23. Let's go down to the field Mark McIntyre. Thanks, guys. Uh, you just saw McCorders run back the kick, and you got to wonder, McCorders was the guy that got burned by Ray Carruth. Here's a guy that has played offensively. He's got a touchdown pass. He has also played defensively. You can see him getting burned by Ray Carruth, and he's running back uh, kickoffs. This guy has got to be tired, and you maybe think that the CU coaches saw, okay, we've got McCorders on Carruth. This guy's been playing both ways all day long. He might be tired. Let's go deep on him and see if we can get a quick six. And that's exactly what they did. Well, R.W. McCorders has played both offense, defense, and special teams today. Plus, Ray Carruth averages 20.5 yards of reception, and plays like that are why his, his, his average is so high. I think the average just went up a little, too. First down for Oklahoma State. The tight end, Alonzo Mays, and they're going to him a lot this second half. Jeff, you've watched Deion Sanders play both ways in the NFL. There have been a few guys through the years. Roy Green for the Washington Redskins, a wide receiver and quarter, or not the Redskins, for the Cardinals, a wide receiver and quarterback. How difficult is it on the college level and the pro level to go both ways? Uh, to go both ways in college is tough. To go both ways in the NFL is Deion Sanders. I mean, he probably is the best all-around athlete that I've ever seen. His baseball skills, his football skills, he can do anything. But R.W. McCorders is unique. He's, he's done very well at both of his positions today also, so he's a real weapon for Oklahoma State. I'm not letting you get off. I asked you how difficult it was. I'm going to ask you that again as soon as this play is over. <laughs> Oklahoma State very close to the first down. It's very, very, very difficult to answer your question. It's, it's a to learn both offensive plays and defensive plays and to get them all put together where you're not making mistakes is impressive. And to keep that stamina. And the kid that just caught a pass for Oklahoma State, you're looking at him, Travis Hartfield. He's also listed at two positions. He is the third string quarterback, and now you see him in the game at wide receiver. They've got a lot of kids with a lot of talent. Second and one, David Thompson gets the first down and gets to midfield. You know, the nice thing about being listed at two positions is you know you're going to play. <laughs> you know, that's nice. You know you're not going to be on the bench. You're going to be playing somewhere. And, you know, when you're that kind of an athlete, that's nice. You know, it's it's got to be not only tiring during the game, it's got to be tiring during the week because you have to take reps at more than one position. And it's also very tiring mentally because you're learning so much and you don't want to make a mistake. And to learn a whole offense and to learn a whole defense, it's tough. You know, Dion can do it. R.W. McCorders, McCorders obvious today showing us that he could do it. So, you know, I'm, I take my hat off to him. It takes a special kind of athlete to be able to do that. First down for Oklahoma State at midfield. The Buffs lead it, 38 to 24. Greg Jones gets in, causes the fumble, and CU recovers it. Billy Mau Mau comes up with the loose ball. On the recovery. Greg Jones gets good penetration into the backfield and puts a good lick on Tony Jones, the quarterback. You see the ball scored out right there. And Vili Mau Mau heads up play, grabs the ball, gets up the field, protects it so it, it doesn't get turned over again. So that's a big, big time play. You'll see it from a little bit different angle here. Great second effort by Greg Jones. Gets around the corner, puts his helmet right on the football. The ball pops out of there. Vili Mau Mau again, good job picking it up, getting it up, and holding onto the ball so Oklahoma State doesn't have a chance to rip it back out of there. Greg Jones led the Buffs with six and a half sacks last year. He now leads the Buffs with six this year. Give him credit for a sack and a forced fumble. The Buffs stay on the ground. Herschel Trotman, a nice run up the middle, down to the 31-yard line. 
one of the things about CU's offensive line is they are so big with Heath Irwin, Brian Stoltenberg, and Chris Naoli up the middle that eventually during the game, they're going to wear you down. So they're putting the ball up in the middle. Herschel Troutman following Stoltenberg right up the middle. Big hole. That's the key to the play, the front three right there. That's why Herschel was able to get up into the middle and get a good gain for CU. A gain of 13 at Oklahoma State. After having scored two quick touchdowns in this fourth quarter, now threatening to score a third. On the option. That's it. Gives to Henry. And he let Lyndon Henry take the beating instead of taking it himself. Oklahoma State did a good job stringing out that option. I talked earlier about Hester doing a good job with the option play. He does a good job at Oklahoma State. Did a good job taking care of the pitch man and the quarterback. You'll see the outside linebacker here do a good job with Hessler, knocking Hessler down. The corner does a good job coming up and making the play. Actually, that was 15. That was Trent Fisher again. So that's your safety. He's, he obviously has your pitch man and your quarterback. So he's going to see. He's going to take whoever has the ball. I'm trying to think. Is there any team that runs the option exclusively anymore? I know Air Force comes close, although the Falcons throw the ball quite a bit more than they used to. Any team that runs it all the time now? I'd have to say Air Force is the closest one that does it. Hessler with a good play action fake has all the time in the world, but nobody's open. Finally gets the ball out to the tight end Lexus, and he's inside the 30, calling a gain of two. Two great things happen on that play right there. The offensive line of CU did a great job against Oklahoma State's defensive line. Hessler is the other reason why this play works well. He's very patient. He's going through his reads. He doesn't have anybody open, so he hits his outlet man. He throws the ball short to Matt Lepsis. Matt Le Lepsis gets positive yardage out of it. So that's a good play on two aspects of offensive football there. Now Lepsis having the finest day of his CU career. That's his sixth catch today which brings him up to 23 for the year, plus he has a touchdown catch. Six foot five junior out of Frisco, Texas. Third and nine, this is Barnes. Has the first down, might get to the end zone, dragged down at the nine by Courtney Garner. They're starting to take advantage right now of CU's offensive line wearing down the defensive line of Oklahoma State. We're going right over the middle, over this front front three. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Now it's in Marlon Barnes's hand. He uses his strength and his running talent to get up the field. You'll see that he doesn't do a lot of side-to-side -side stuff. He stays straight up the middle, and everything that he does is positive yardage. Why, if one of these sophomore running backs doesn't get you, another one does. It'll be first and goal for the Buffs at the nine-yard line. Marlon Barnes out of Memphis, Tennessee. He gets the call again. A couple of yards. It's unusual that any college team is going to have a one, two, three punch like CU does. Usually they have a one and a two punch. They'll have two good running backs that play all the time, but CU has three good running backs. Colorado State running away with this, with this game. Oh, look at this. Nebraska, 73 points against Iowa State. And let's not forget what happened to second-ranked Florida State this week. The second-ranked team of the nation lost to Virginia. Bessler over the middle. Oh, inadvertently deflected by the linebacker Billy Stone. He had no idea the pass was coming, but he was able to keep CU from putting up another touchdown. Billy Stone was doing a great job back there finding where the receiver was that was crossing. You'll see Lepsis get up and he'll start to cross. So Billy Stone's job is to find that back. He does a good job. He obviously didn't know the ball was coming, but he does a good job knocking that ball down. And Hessler couldn't believe that he hit, it in the, hit him in the back with it. That'll bring up third and goal from the seven. Hessler having a great afternoon. We'll give you his stats in just a second. This is Carruth. I don't see a signal for a touchdown. Yes, touchdown. 
Caruth. We talked earlier about Ray Caruth's ability to get open deep, but he's very fast and he's very quick. John Hessler puts incredible touch on this ball. Great touch, puts it right on the money to Caruth. Doesn't put him in a position where he's going to get hit by the guy uh, coming up. Jerome Johnson coming up from Oklahoma State. Puts it right on the money. Caruth has the opportunity to turn up field and get it in the end zone. And the official on the sideline took a second to figure out if Caruth's knee went down before he got into the end zone. And he decided, no, that ball crossed the plane before the knee went down. So another touchdown catch for Ray Caruth. Another extra point from Neil Voskaritschian. And see you with three touchdowns here in the fourth quarter. That's what they lead by in Stillwater, Oklahoma. There are some things in life you just can't do alone. Like driving on the North I-25 Downtown Express. So grab a partner. Carpools can now join RTD buses and save 13 minutes on the Downtown Express. Call White Arrangers for more information. At Grand Pontiac Buick GMC Truck, we've got something hot to tell you about. It's our Grand Tailgate Clearance Party. And that means we've lowered every tailgate and every clearance price on GMC truck vans and conversion vans. Even Grand Am started only $189 a month. Buick Regals from $288 a month. Plus mouth-watering financing for all. And sizzling deal and dug deals on every Pontiac Buick GMC and every used car truck and van. Don't miss Denver's biggest tailgate clearance party. Because we're cooking at Grand Pontiac Buick GMC Truck, West 104th. Busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted with Clint Eastwood all week on UPN 20's Prime Movie. Go ahead. Make my day. Wednesday night at 7, a killer is busted. Eastwood must capture a homicidal maniac in sudden impact. Thursday night at 7, Harry's disgusted when a serial killer torments the city by the bay in Dirty Harry. And Friday night at 7, Eastwood can't be trusted by the Russians in Firefox. Busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted. Starting Wednesday night at 7. 3.21 to go in the ball game, and Jeffrey, this game much like the game at Iowa State where the Cyclones were beating CU early in the fourth quarter, and then boom, CU takes off, and it looks like an easy win when in actuality it isn't. Well, I think you go back to the, their offense, CU's offensive and defensive lines. They're starting to take over here in the fourth quarter. The front three that we talked about earlier with Brian Stoltenberg, Chris Naoli, and Heath Irwin are really, really doing a good job wearing down Oklahoma State's defense as they did Iowa State's defense, and it's starting to show right now. Jason Leslie kicking off for the Buffs. Kicking into a bit of a win. That ball settles at the 14. It's R.W. McWhorters again. Look out. He is at midfield. He is finally pushed out of bounds at the CU 43. Once again, the CU special teams not doing a stellar job on the kickoff. See Ray Carruth here doing a good job looking the ball in, in a little bit of traffic there, getting himself up the field and getting into the end zone. He didn't run sideways. He got straight up the field and into the end zone. That's a great play by Ray Carruth. A couple of long kickoff returns from Oklahoma State has kept them in this ball game. Well, you talked to me earlier about McCorders, and you did a good job uh, getting me back on track with the thing but learning offense, defense, and special teams, R.W. McCordish, I mean, you can't say enough about him. He can do everything. Well, Jeff, young he kids don't get tired. He has not kicked the ball yet. <laughs> He's 19 years old. 19-year-olds don't get tired. That's true. 19-year-olds don't get tired. Well, I got tired when I was 19. But he hadn't kicked it yet. Oh, wait. There's still 3.12 <laughs> left to go. Tony Jones going over the middle. Has his man. <laughs> It's Kent Luck, the junior wide receiver. And they're down to the CU 25-yard line. Again, I'm very impressed with the way Tony Jones throws the ball. He doesn't throw it a lot. We talked about that a little bit earlier. But when he does throw it, he's got nice touch on it. He puts it on the money most of the time. And he does a good job. And then a good, great job by Kent Luck getting up in the air and catching that ball. Uh, actually, in the last three games, Jones has improved greatly. He's completed about 70% of his passes. Yet, he's still on the season, is only at 44%. This is David Thompson, a great run. He is inside the turn, down to the nine. Inside the they are not giving up. No, Oklahoma State won't give up. That's not Bob Simmons. 
Bob Simmons is the type coach where he is going to come at you all game long. Great job by Oklahoma State's offensive line. Open in a hole there, a hole there for, for Thompson. He gets up in the middle. That's a game-saving tackle by Don o, Leo Mitty, you know, that would put uh, CU only down by set, or actually down by 21. We've seen pretty good efforts this year from teams that have former CU assistants going against Rick Neuheisel. We saw Kansas with new defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz, the former CU assistant, beating them down to 40 to 24, doing a good job defensively on CU. And now Simmons, the only assistant coach we haven't seen that was up for the job that Neuheisel eventually got is Elliot Uzelak, who is the offensive coordinator at Kentucky. They, thankfully for CU, are not on the schedule this year. Well, when, you, when you're a coach, when you're, when you're on a team that you're playing, we talked earlier about the tendencies. They know player personnel. That's what you study as a player during the week. It's, during the week is tendencies of the other players. That's why I think that they do so well against CU. First and goal from the nine. CU with a good pass rush, and Jones just throws the ball away. Smart move by the junior quarterback. And Bob Simmons spent a lot of time at CU. He was there for a long period of time, so he knows exactly what these players can and can't do. Now, execution is the other thing that you got to take a look at, and Oklahoma State has executed their offense and their defense very, very well today. Bob Simmons, you know, at his initial press conference here in Stillwater, he flashed his na national championship ring from CU's 1990 season and said his goal was to get another one of those rings at Oklahoma State. Look at this, Penn State losing to Northwestern in the third quarter. That one's at Dyke Stadium in Evanston, Illinois, and it's 14 to 10. A lot of people thought this would be the week Northwestern would crack. Tony Jones, again, throws the ball away because he sees his wide receiver surrounded by CU Buffs in the end zone. Good coverage by CU secondary. They do a little rollout pass to the right, but CU's defense and their defensive backs do a great job covering their receivers. Tony Jones just has to throw that ball out of bounds. Some other scores from around the nation. Michigan State. Close to upsetting Michigan. And Kansas State put the womp on Oklahoma. I wonder what Howard Schnellenberger is going to use as an excuse this week. Well, they had another punt block today. That's six weeks in a row that they've had a punt block. And tell me, who is the special teams coach for Oklahoma? <laughs> Howard Schnellenberger oh. last... <laughs> Thanks for giving that one to me. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma State calls a timeout. We're going to see a pass, that the, the one where he's going to roll out to the right. CU does a good job fighting off the uh, offensive push of Oklahoma State. And the camera operator here finds out what it's like to be oh, hit by a DB. <laughs> Good thing those guys are insured, huh? That <laughs> oh, was a good tackle, though. Good tackle. We've got 2.05 to go. See you leading Oklahoma State 45 to 24. But believe me, this game was a lot closer than the score might indicate. We were all tied up coming into the fourth quarter. 24-24. I mentioned it earlier, I'll mention it again. The final home game for CU is next Saturday against Missouri. There are some tickets left, and if you can't get a hold of a ticket, we'll have the game for you on News 4. And the Buffs will, will try and break a small losing streak on their home field, Folsom Field. With losses to KU and Nebraska back-to-back, -back. it's the first time the Buffs have lost consecutive home games since 1988. Third and goal from the nine for Oklahoma State. Jones puts it up for Alonzo Mays. He's got it. Touchdown. And T.J. Cunningham doesn't like the call. They took advantage of a height difference there. Alonzo Mays is 6'6". T.J. Cunningham is 6 feet. There's a big height difference. They put a tight end outside. They're going to let the quarterback throw it up there. They'll let Alonzo Mays go get it. Tony Jones just throws the ball up here, and he's going to let Tony, or, or Alonzo Mays do the, the rest of the job. He gets a little push, but that is an excellent catch. Keeping his feet inbound, making the catch. Good score by Oklahoma State. And that's what TJ's angry about. He thought Mays oh, gave a little shove there, right there, before there. the ball landed. But he doesn't get the call, and Oklahoma State gets the touchdown. Lawson Vaughn, the extra point. They fake it. Shovel pass. And they get it in. 
Jeff Grenier on the reception. So Oklahoma State putting an extra couple of points on the board with two minutes left. That's a big play by Oklahoma State. I didn't think that they'd do that. They came out and did a little fake field goal to Grenier, and he did a good job getting in the end zone. You know, in the long run, it's not going to mean a thing. CU is still going to win this game. In the short run, that's Bob Simmons and Oklahoma State saying, guys, we're not conceding anything to you. We'll take a little bit another look and see if he does actually push T.J. Cunningham. Actually, I think that it's kind of a gray area. I don't know if he did or he didn't, but he did get away with something, and he made a great catch. Take a look at the two-point conversion. They'll run their wing back across the formation. Little shovel pass by the holder. And Grenier gets in the end zone for two points for Oklahoma State. That's a, that's a very well-designed play. They're always well-designed when they work. Right, exactly. Here's another look at the touchdown. You might be able to see if he pushed off a little bit here. Uh, it's No, I just think that's a great play by Mays. Mays made a great play right there. 45-32, we've got two minutes left. And you know what's going on on the CU sideline right now? They're saying, those guys have the gall to try a two-point conversion. We're going to try and put some points back up on the board against them. I'm I, will be, I wouldn't be surprised if CU would come out and throw deep. They'll try to throw deep a couple times. Oklahoma State, again, not conceding anything. They're lining up for an onside kick. Here it is. CU tips the ball to Root. It goes off his hands and out of bounds. And now CU's got good where, field position. Yeah, that's where CU will get the ball. CU has good field position. Ray Carruth did a good job knocking that ball out of bounds. Now that's tough. As a player, when you're the guy that they're kicking the ball to, here comes the ball at you, and you're waiting for somebody from Oklahoma State to crush you in the ribs. You know, that's just, that's kind of like the Suicide Squad. Donnell Leo Meaty got a hand on it. Ray Carruth knocked it out of bounds. So, you know, all for nothing, really. So you get, the, get some good field position. Look at Bob. He's smiling. He knows he came this close to getting that ball back and, and possibly putting up some more points against you. That's one of the teams on the depth chart when you go in for special teams at the beginning of the year that you hope you're not on. Really? The <laughs> hands team? You don't want to be on there. Unless team, you're right? deep. Because, because there's so much room for embarrassment. There's room for embarrassment and room for somebody to just stick their helmet right in your ribcage and ruin your day. <laughs> Jay Grossfield makes the tackle on Marlon Barnes. Clock's ticking. Oklahoma State with two timeouts left. The Buffs have all three of theirs. Well, this will raise CU's record to 7-2 and two on the year, 3-2 and two in conference, while Oklahoma State will fall to two and seven and one and four in the big eight. Second and 11 for the Bucks. They're in Oklahoma State territory. This is Barnes. CU keeping it on the ground. They want the clock to be ticking. Yeah, it does. You'll We're tell approaching you're, the one-minute mark. You'll tell your running backs to stay in bounds at all costs right now. Timeout. Timeout on the field. Cowboys. Oklahoma State takes it, so that leaves them with one. Marlon Barnes has done an exceptional job today, but he got a tremendous block from Matt Leftis on that play. If Matt Leftis didn't get that block, Oklahoma State would have stopped that play for no gain. Matt Leftis did get the block, and they got a pretty good gain out of it. Well, John Hessler having a pretty good game himself. He's over 300 yards for the afternoon. 302 to be exact, with four touchdown passes, and maybe more important than that, zero interceptions. Well, I'm impressed with him. I mean, he came in in a situation where he got kind of got thrown right into the fire. He never, you know, went into the frying pan. They just threw him right into the fire during the, the Texas A&M game, and he's done great all year long. He's, he's, he's made some mistakes, but he hasn't had the opportunity to be in there a lot. He was inexperienced when he got in, and he's done a tremendous job all year. 59 seconds to go. CU facing third and three. They keep it on the ground. Marlon Barnes does not get the 
first down, so the Blue will have a punt. Or at least it brings up fourth down. Whether or not the U will punt is another question. You know, this is just another indication, Jeff, that there really are no doormats in this league anymore. Used to be, you can count on a win against Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, since, uh, since they've gone downhill ninth, since 1988. Iowa State with Troy Davis, a Heisman candidate at running back. There's no easy win on the schedule anymore. No, there's not. And there's going to be even tougher wins next year when they go to the Big 12 because you're going to get Texas, Texas A&M, Baylor, those type schools where every game for you is going to be a tough game. So there's, there's going to be rivalries, but the rivalries are going to be just like the other game because everybody's going to be good, just like you said. Oh, you're absolutely right about the Big 12. If you look at all of that, those teams, if you look at the complete dozen, nine of them have been ranked at some point this year. And there's a lot, a lot of great players that are going to be in that conference. So, you know, it's going to make for exciting times during the during the, the Big 12 season next year. You're going to get to see some new teams, and it's going to be exciting for the fans. There are your Big 8 standings. Nebraska, top ranked in the nation, still undefeated. Colorado and Kansas State, and Kansas all tied for second place. Colorado and Kansas State still have yet to play this year. On fourth down, the Buffs going for it. We thought they might. That's the seventh reception for Ray Carruth today. But he is short of the first down. Short of the first so down. Oklahoma State takes over on downs. With 44 seconds to go. The score is CU 45 and Oklahoma State 32. Well, it'll be uh, interesting to see what Bob Simmons comes out with with Oklahoma State right now. They I think he's going to come right at him. They put a little trick with the uh, with the fake field goal and getting in the end zone, so we'll have to see what happens. They want to throw it, and they want to throw it fairly deep. That's intercepted off an Oklahoma State defender's hand, and T.J. Cunningham comes up with the catch. How P.J. Cunningham intercepted that ball, we're going to have to take a look and see because he was, be was it tipped? I think it might have been tipped by two Oklahoma State players. Because it looked to me like he was behind the Oklahoma State player. And look at T.J. He is still hot from getting burned on the touchdown pass the last possession. Now he gets back in. T.J. has a lot of pride. He does a good job staying with that receiver right there fighting off and it tipped off of Luck's hands and T.J. picked it off. That's it went job. off two Oklahoma State players, Grissom and Luck. So T.J. getting a little revenge. T.J. doing a great job. You see at the end of the play, T.J. and, and uh, one of the Oklahoma State players kind of getting into it. They're probably just talking about how classes are going in college. And, and now you can really tell how much this game meant to both sides of the To Bob Simmons, and to Rick Neuheisel. And, and before you start thinking that, that these two are not friends because of the situation at CU, Neuheisel getting the job at this point, they really are very friendly. In fact, since Bob Simmons has come to Oklahoma State, the two of them have both. And now they will meet at midfield, say hello, congratulate each other on a well-played game. I think, it's, be I think it's great because, you know, they come from a, from a common place. You know, you see them hugging at midfield. Bob Simmons is a great guy. Rick Neuheisel is an outstanding person. And it's, it's, it's nice to see them. Let's go down to the field now. Mark McIntosh will wrap it up from down there. You're on, you're on, you're on, you're on. All right, thank you very much. We're here with Matt Russell. And uh, fourth quarter, you guys came alive. Yeah, it's about time, huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, we started out slow, and they uh, kind of exploited our game plan. And, uh, you know, it took us a while to get going, but we won the game, and it was ugly, but we won. Can you put your finger on, you know, you guys played well against Oklahoma, but since then, the Big 8 play, you guys have, have struggled somewhat, you certainly struggled the first three quarters of this game. Right. What is the problem, you think? Oh, no, I don't know if it's attitude or, uh, you know, I don't know if we're just not doing our responsibilities, but, uh, you know, we'll go back this week. We're 7-2, and two, and... Uh, you know, we got a great shot at these next two games, so we're not worried. We just need to practice hard and, uh, you know, kind of uh, kind of check ourselves, check our hearts out. I think what you can look at is the old adage, it's not how you start, how you finish, and you did finish strong in the fourth quarter. Yeah, we finished strong, and we came out here with a win, and that's all you want. So, you know, we're going to be happy about it, celebrate when we get home. So 
We're happy. The guys up in the booth, very impressed with your two inches of vertical leap when you went up there to knock down that, that right. pass. Was it, was it all of two? I figured it was more like one. <laughs> Might have been. Might have been so. two. All right. All right. Good job, Matt right. Russell. Thanks. The junior linebacker and the Buffs come away with the victory. John Hessler had a big ball game, and in the fourth quarter, the offense certainly came alive, and the Buffs go back home. You know, they want to win out, try to win uh, nine ball games and get into a major bowl, possibly the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day. And... Uh, they got the job done. It was uh, kind of shaky for three quarters, but they got the job done. Yeah, Hessler with a great game. He threw for more than 300 yards. And Ray Carruth, the wide receiver, went over 130 yards in receptions. He caught seven balls, two of them, for touchdowns. There's Bob Simmons' wife, Linda, leaving the stadium. A lot to smile about. Even though they didn't get the win, they still put in a great effort against the school that bypassed Bob Simmons for the head coaching job last year. Well, we'll take a break now, and when we come back, we'll wrap things up from Stillwater. In Colorado, we take some things very seriously. All right, Blackjack here. I wondered if you were going to make it. 